told you, that's the beat right there. That's the beat right there. Come on, y'all. We got another fabulous show. Thank y'all for tuning in. You know who it is. You ain't, you ain't tuning in for me. You tuning in for the gentleman from the right of me, y'all. Y'all getting ready for the show. So before I do the show, you know what we got to do. I got to read y'all comments and the comments that my crew gets. And sometimes y'all are vicious. So let's see what it is with this one here. This is from the Godfrey Joke Thief uh, clip. Remember he did the one about Joke Thieves? This is from N-W-A-N-A-K-A. So N-W-A, Naka. Knock a please, man. What the hell? He said, wait till you find out Steve stole that joke too. Damn. Boy, y'all cold-blooded, boy. Y'all cold-blooded. Okay. This is from the Pimpin' Ken one. When he, now he says, never give up. He details his beef with Jay-Z. This is uh, the baby episode. This is from WW Records 1. It says, damn good interview. Great job, Pierre. I like that one. Now we got to clip that one right there. We got to clip that one right there. I don't know who, who my crew picked that one because y'all be trying to get some bullshit. All right. From the Lavelle Crawford Part 2 episode, this is from King LD 33 And he says, I can definitely see Lavelle as a TV dad or like a school coach. Much prosperity to both of you brothers. That's what I'm trying to get the positive ones. Obviously, it must be a lot of positive ones because my crew would find the foul ones. Trust me. Oh, that's, that's how they roll here. All right, y'all. I'm excited about having this gentleman here, man. It's almost like I'm interviewing a celebrity interviewer, man. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of amped up about it. I got I to gotta act proper. You know what no, I'm saying? No, you don't. Yeah. Like, you really? should be comfortable, bro. All right, all right. Well, give it up for the one and only Mr. Head Crack, y'all. Give it up. Some, some love. The head Crack in the building. In the building. Come on. Yeah, pull, pull, that mic up. pull that mic up closer. Pull that there mic we go. Up. We in yeah, again. All the way up to you. Closer, man. You know, yeah, it's just looking phallic mic. now. It's no, no, kind of weird. You know. All right, what's up? Right, this is Atlanta, nigga. You know what that is. <laughs> 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 First of all, thank you for coming on the show. For Thanks real, for, for real, having man. me, bro. Really? I, can't, I, I can't believe that you're saying that. And I'm not being bullshitting you. I just think because I see you as a star person that does this, man. To do my show is... It was crazy, man. So I remember I watching How to Be a Player and yeah, following your comp. I used to be okay. an intern at Def Jam. So what's really? Yeah, so I had like mad, you know, How to Be a Player right. propaganda right. around at all times. So I was very familiar with your work way ahead. And right. then I ran into you, I think, through some mutual chicks we know. Probably. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know, and then. Oh, you you want marriage? So yeah, you damn right. With them hoes, you talking about that shit back there? <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah. Oh, nah, yeah. man, it's wild times, <laughs> man. Right, right, right. All right. This is what I like to do. I like to go back a little bit just to find out, you know, how you came about and how you, you, you know, how you grew up. Now you're from the Bronx. Yep. Right. What's your family structure? How'd you grow up? Who's in the house? Um, sure. my mom and my dad were both in the crib nice. until I was like seven or eight. Okay. And then they, like, we fleed in the middle of the night, and it was one of those situations where. Hey, you want to go stay in Queens for a little bit with your granddad? And right. I'm like, sure. Right. Then next thing you know, I'm here for like two weeks. And he's like, hey, you want to go visit your grandmother in Texas? And I'm like, yes. The summer's still so short. Right, right. Then a couple weeks later, he's like, hey, we registered you in school. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In, in Texas. In Texas. Oh, yeah. What so, part of Texas did you move to? I was living in Carrollton. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I used to, I used to live in um, uh, Addison. Yeah. So, yeah, right, right next to it. Wow. wow. And how old were you when you, detect, when you were there? When I went there for the very first time, I right. was like seven. Okay, okay. And then that very next time, I moved back to New York for a little bit, stayed with my dad. I would yo-yo back and forth between right. whatever parent was the most stable that year. Right, right. Well, with, right you know, right. With, some, with some grandma intervention in the middle, you know right, what I mean? Because right. my grandmother grandma, lived man. in the Bronx, too, so I would bounce around. What do you, um, do you remember New York? Where, where, where Hell yeah. Growing up, all the stuff, yeah. Because I got to check in and out through different pockets of life right. and live for a little bit and do school right. out there. So I had this whole New York life. I had this whole Texas life. Right, And right. then as an adult, I got this whole Atlanta life that I've had for like the 13, last 13 years. So okay. I got really familiar with a mo but multiple coasts. Right, right. I remember you were in Dallas, because I lived in Dallas when you was on Ricky, working with Ricky Smiley, yep. if I remember that. But let me go back to the, uh, something about New Yorkers, man. They just have an affinity to just back up their boroughs, man. You know, and they go, nigga, Brooklyn the best, nigga. They're you know, the proudest, please. though. Huh? Brooklyn is the proudest borough I, I, in New York. You, you might have a very like, good. Oh, hush, yeah. We be like, the Bronx is in the house, but. Yeah. Be cricket, cricket, right? Yeah, I never yeah, hear, bro. Yeah, yeah. We, we say it bold, but Brooklyn says it in italics, so right, maybe it's the other right, way around. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. But yeah, BX. You know what I right, mean? Right, right, right. Damn, a lot of um, if I remember, a lot of Puerto Ricans or something like that in in, in the Bronx. Yo, a gang of Puerto Ricans, and that was the cool thing about like living in the area I lived in. So I lived right. in a building when I was growing up called Tracy Towers. Okay. And then eventually I moved to Concourse Village. Didn't okay. know much about much about the people over there because it was the '90s and it was dangerous. So right, I didn't go right. outside much. Crack and all that stuff. Crack was in full swing. Yeah, David yeah. Dinkins was the mayor. Yeah. We had 
We had serial killers and crime doers like they had like Marvel villains. I remember we had the Zodiac Killer for a yep, minute. Come on now. Not to be confused with the one in California, right, but right. we had our own Zodiac Killer that they just gave up and just right. stopped looking for him. There was a Spider-Man rapist. He was climbing in Project Windows one year really? and doing his thing. There was a dude named Dart Man one year. He was like in Manhattan blowing darts and hitting people with the I, darts. Actually, I remember that. I think I actually remember. What was that brother name that he was on the run? Everybody kind of cheering him on and they caught him. Larry Davis. Larry Davis. Larry Davis. Larry Davis. Yeah, Larry Davis. That was that. Was He's he the a, Luke Cage of right, New York right, crime. Right, right, <laughs> right, for right. Real. Like, was that in the Bronx too? Was, was he running in the Bronx? I think was that was Harlem. That was Harlem? Don't quote me on right, that. Don't right, come at right. me in the comments. In the comments. It was right, in the Bronx? Right. right. They say on the side it was the, the Bronx. Bronx. Right. Yeah. I, I thought it was in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. And people had his back too. They was hiding from the police. Yeah. I, I'm glad we get to claim him. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> but y'all got Yankee Stadium, man. So go, we you know. do. I, the, new, the new Yankee Stadium is dope. I missed the old one, like right. when it was like when you could see it when you got off the train. train right, you could right. see the, the, the new one, but right. it was different. It hit different. What um what what hip hop did you grow up on? Was it was it New York only or the East? Because the West Coast was banging too, though. Now, so I was such a geek where like every album that came out, I would buy it. Um, Until it got to the point where it was impossible to do it. Right. And that happened like around 90, 91. Because I would save my school money, shoot dice with that money to uh. get money to go buy music. So I remember like whether it was a serious artist or Arsenio Hall when he came out as Chunky, Chunky A. Chunky A, come on, I remember I that. bought every tape, whether it was like going to the really? Wiz, Tower Records, Sam Goody, right. local independent mom and pop store, because I loved it all. And right. then when stuff started coming from the West Coast, it was even more exciting because... That was a new floodgate. Right, right, and right. And then the South started doing their thing. Like, were you that. a huge fan of somebody? A couple of acts from New York, like saying these are my my folks. I had to get everything from I, them. I felt like I was the fourth unofficial member of Run DMC. Okay. I felt like I was the skinny fat boy. You know wow. what I mean? Wow, fat boys. Okay. And I felt like if with the Kango low enough, I could have been anybody hanging out with LL. Hell no. Come shut some of this down, man. E Love, Cut Creator, Bobcat. <laughs> right, I could fit right, in somewhere, right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. But I mean, I, I mean, I was buying everything that came out, so everything new I was on the wave. De La Soul, Tribe come Quest, on, That's the Sonic, on. Ghetto Boys. I mean, Awesome Dre, if you want to talk right. Detroit. Right. I was buying everything. Super Love of Sea Cast right. and Overrun, everything. Let me tell you, let me ask you this question. In a five year, from what year to what year, do you think the best hip hop was ever? Shoot, man. I would have to say. Okay. 88. Come on now, what? The 93. I'm going to say the same thing. Because everybody's yes. busting. Like, every coast was coming out getting yes. love. That's real shit. And some people would argue that they didn't get love on all coasts. Right. But at least on the radio, it was all represented in some right. way or another. Right. You had DJ Quick and some of that. You had, damn, um, 93. Come on. Early shit. Bad Boy. Shit, yeah. Poor Righteous Teacher. We, got, we, had, we, had a lot of, we had conscious rap and hardcore rap around that time. And I think... Uh, LA started started really moving in about they, they more I think it's more in the like 94 95 96 mm. when LA really started but um yeah man I oh, shit there was some people I I love I just think and and you could tell who was singing it who was doing the thing now yeah. I, I kind of get a little mixed like who is it little this little that what the fuck who is this person and shit but back then you could see this person was this this person when you heard him I look really at flyers sometimes and I'm like these are not real people <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you yeah. made these artists up. Yeah, yeah, these people yeah, don't yeah, exist. Right, right. These are like uh, what they call that not, see, non-playable characters, but in rap form. Wow. Like, wow. what was your breakthrough song that you heard that made you become like a hardcore fan of hip hop? That's a good question. I'm gonna tell you. All I, two of them. I, I'm, I'm from DC, but I heard it all out of every car banging. Every car was uh, "It Takes Two" by Rob Bass. That's a forever record. <laughs> I heard that thing forever, ever, ever, ever. I, that one, and I would say probably, uh, that's a good question. That song, and um, it was it I Ain't No Joke? It was, Eric B. Rakim, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say them songs, you know, I would, I would say them too. What about you? Um, the crazy thing, so you talk in early 80s, it was the rap breaks in R&B records. Because you still wasn't really hearing a lot of hip hop on the actual radio. You'd have to stay up to some ungodly hour right. to hear certain artists. So I remember when New Edition came out with Cool It Now, I'm waiting to tag in on Ralph's part. Why are you all coming down on me? Because uh -huh. that it would be them little right, breaks right. of rap you would get in R&B records. Shaka Khan, I feel for you. Right. But then when I saw Crush Groove for the first time, I did it for you. Out of here.
Run the, everybody that they mentioned in the movie. Right. I was looking for their tapes, trying to find their sure. videos. Sure. Um, even like when they went, to, they did the thing at the Fever. I was uh -huh. like, you know, pausing it. Yeah, Who those yeah. other names on the wall? Love yeah. Buck Starsky, Jekyll and Hyde. I need all of that. That's no, that's that's real stuff. In fact, they they, they show some loves and some go go bands in that in that, that movie too. You know, because that was Def, that was a Def Jam production. Yep, right? yep, yep, yep. They had uh, the Junkyard Band. We well, the that was in Tougher Than Lever. Oh, that was tough. Where, okay, when uh, when Jam Master J yeah, got yeah, yeah, out, when, in, when yeah. DMC got yeah. out of jail, and mm -hmm. they went to Runny Ray Mom House. All right, my bad. This is a fish, this is a hip hop official. I'm trying to protect you in the no, comments. No, no, come on, man. I like no. <laughs> <laughs> they go along with my fucking shit. Well, no, nah, I feel you. No, no, no. No, that was cool. All right, so you're surrounded by hip hop so much. When did you get that bite and said, "Man, I think I want to grab a mic. I want to do this." Um, it was uh, my seventh grade year in, in in middle school, right? Okay. I was going to Christ the King in the Bronx off the Grand Concourse. Um, there was this kid who used to always give me a tough time because, like, that was my first year going to that school. And I don't know. He used to always just fuck with me for some reason, right? Uh -huh. So there was a talent show coming up. And this is back then when you had to audition to get into the talent show. Right, right. And he was like, yo, I'm going to squash you in the talent show. You know, I run with third base. And they, they helping me with my rhymes. And no mm -hmm. one believed him. Oh, okay. okay. But I still took that threat seriously because okay. I take everything seriously. Okay. You know what I mean? I uh, answer scam likely calls. I take everything well, seriously. Wow, boy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I, I never heard that. I like that. That is serious. <laughs> so I would go home. And this, and this part of time of my life, I'm living in Concourse Village. And the only thing to do is to go outside and get murdered. So oh, I spent wow. mad time in my crib just writing rhymes. And my uh, this kid I used to rhyme with named Hassan, he lived like four floors below me. So I lived in 6C, he lived on 2C. So I would just stick my head out there, yo, Haas, what you working? You know, like, nah, so yeah, we yeah. had that cool, like, ghetto intercom yeah, thing right. going on, and I was just writing rhymes. And um, I ended up winning the talent show. This other dude didn't even make it in. You wow, know what I'm saying? The threat wasn't even a threat. Yeah, wow. so at that point, I was like, okay, I got something here. Then I started, like, entering every rap contest, every rap battle. And this is back when it was just on the spot, impromptu. Not like, I know I'm going to battle right. you in three months, so I'm right. going to pull your right. ancestry. Right. Like, nah, it was like the real, like, show up and go up type stuff. Nice, nice. Wow, wow. That's good. Okay. And how'd you do in the competition? In the competition. But I won the talent show. Okay, you won it. And I won most battles that I answered. Like, if you go through, like, old Blaze magazines, uh -huh. like, when they did the, they, the Blaze magazine only did one rap battle. I came in, like, third nice. in that joint. Nice. I've been a ghost in the machine in a long time. The problem is I got buried in the radio stuff. Because right. if you see me do something five days a week, that's in a high frequency. That's what you're going to see the most. Right. I don't be like, I make music. I make music. Here's me rapping the commercial to go out. Because I didn't want to over... Do it, you know, That's because a rarity. Pe okay, I like because sometimes people it. be like, "Nigga, we get it." You right, you burnt out. Right. No, <laughs> yeah. No, no. So I just want to. I, I, I keep having these razzle dazzle. Oh, I didn't know you rap moments. Right. And you know, and I'll take those because those are new people that I'm converting over that I had no idea. Right. Right. Versus people who are over it. You know, it's funny. I'm gonna interview her. I, I, I saw her recently at the comedy club, uh, Kim Whitley, and I asked. I said, you know, you never had a, like a breakout movie, or you ever you know had a sitcom? And she said, to be honest with you, Pete. I like to play in the middle. People can just keep picking me for stuff, and you can last a lot longer. She said, I was afraid if I got out there and blew real big, it would be it could be over. That's the thing. But as long as I play in that socket and you can always put me in something, I can work forever. So it was kind of like you saying, I don't want to do too much. I just want to keep working my thing without trying to do over, over extend. That's a, I commend people like that because people always try to reach for the most. You know, I'm going to do everything and be yeah. seen, and people can get burnt out on you. Um, now, excuse me for some of, the, some of the, the stuff I may not know. Did you work with Buck Wild? From like Star and Buckwild? Yeah. Nah. That wasn't that Buckwild. Okay. I was that. a fan of that show. Like Star and Buckwild was an insti Until the Leah institution joke. in New York. Until the Leah joke. Yeah, the Leah joke. Yeah, it kind of, you know, we got him in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Hell but, yeah. But I always was baffled at how they was able to get away, get away with, with the with stuff that, that they was able to get away with. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it fascinated me on, a, on such a high level because. Right, right. It, 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 brought, it brought a threat level to morning radio that wasn't there sure. prior. They were kind of like, to me, like the black Howard Stern at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People push the envelope. All right, so you do a rap. You had a rap album. What was that? Uh, Action? Or, Action or, Park. Or, yeah, Action yeah, Park. Yeah, like I released that during the best time during the pandemic. It right. was the worst time. Because <laughs> you okay. couldn't really go out and promote things. Oh. You know, mm -hmm. like, but I was sitting on this body of work for a uh -huh. minute, and it needed to come out because it was going to come out before the pandemic, you know, like right, right around the time the pandemic started. Sure. I started to slowly roll singles out and I put it out and it's still a solid body of work. It right. came out January of 2021. Here we are, 2024. Right. And 
I was listening to it in the gym the other day, and it still no, rocks. It still, rocks, it still right, moves right. me, and I still can stand behind the stuff I said on it. Would you? Why don't you put it out? It's out. It's out. It's out. Oh, but you didn't really promoting it. No more. I mean, yeah. I mean, I still sometimes loop back, and I might, you know, play like a video clip of me performing okay. some of the songs live because that's okay. still a heavy part of my live shows. Okay, but um, I wish I could have been doing shows when I dropped it. Right. You know, everybody was inside and virtual concerts, unless D Nice is spinning for you, are whack. Come on now. You know what I mean? Well, you got the other point there. Okay. So you get into radio, right? You get into radio. How do you get, start getting a radio? From you being a, a MC or just a person in college, was it, how did it move to Yo, that? Yo, it was a domino effect. So okay. when I was in high school, I, I'm still, I'm in Texas now. Okay. I moved back. I got okay. a little trouble in New York mm -hmm. and, and I didn't understand the legal system. So I fleed for some stuff that I probably could have just stayed. I got caught jumping a turnstile, and I thought I was going to end up in Spofford because of that. Really? Oh, I, a turnstile jump? I didn't know how it right, worked, man. Right, like, right. I had a friend who used to get arrested right. all the time, right. and I was the friend who didn't get arrested yeah, right. all the time because, right. like, I was just always never around when bad stuff would happen. So we got popped one day when I was trying to shop my demo, and we had enough money to either take the train back home or keep going and go to Def Jam and drop this tape off. Right. So we went to Def Jam and dropped this tape off. And I ended up meeting a guy who actually would end up managing me for a little bit. Okay. But on the way back to Yonkers, that's where I was living at that time. Like, I was staying with my dad. Um, man, undercover transit cop got us, man. Right. He was smart enough to give a fake name. I gave him my real name, my blood type. I told him, like, You're I told nice him guy. What, what my parents had me. Like, yeah. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I thought, like, once the, the ticket would come, right. that I'd have to go to court and I would instantly go to go jail. To jail. I didn't understand how the legal system worked. Right. I just read magazines and rapped. Right, right. And what year, what year was this roughly? This would have to be... Early 90s? 93. 93. Because when I came back, I had a Wu-Tang tape, and I told everybody in Texas about these dudes in New York who rap about Kung Fu. Okay. Was, the reason I asked you, because you went with a tape. Of course, you don't, kids ain't going to do it no more. But you went to a record company with a tape and said, listen to it. So when you walk in there, do you, do you already know who to talk to? You say, lady in the front desk, I'm the coldest dude around. I didn't know Listen. who to talk to. Because at that time, I had like no record right. company connections. Right. But it was crazy because years later, I would end up working for all these same right. companies that have right. a lot of these connections. But it was just, yo, I went up there with intent and will because that actually worked in one scenario. We dropped the tape off at some place. This is like weeks before. And they wanted to sign us. But they was having all the Shakespearean language in the contract that didn't make sense to anybody in my yeah, house. Yeah, They're like, that. yo, it's a scam, you know? Right, so right. Like, so y'all jump. And we couldn't jump. Google it because, you know, it's 92. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay, okay. Um, um, you've, been around, you've been on radio for a long time. I'll tell you a little, okay, you can tell me the difference of how things happen, how it worked. I was approached with radio. Now I wasn't approached. People tell me I should do radio. You should. It's like, you should do radio. You're funny. This for a long time. I started about, saying, okay. This motherfucker gonna tell me how much I'm gonna make an hour? An hour, like 12 hours an hour. I said, Err! they said, well, you can make money on uh, what it, promotional stuff and, and par host a party. What city was this though? Oh, that was a, that's a good question. Um, it might have been Phoenix, Arizona. They might do that to you there, yeah. yeah. I said, 12 hours an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Word? Was this an FM station? Yeah, well, 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 they would tell me that's what they pay. Yeah, 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 it was FM station. Okay, cool. And I, I was like, Maybe that was part time, maybe for the weekend. I, I just remember hearing twelve dollars an hour, and you get your money. I said, "Well, how, how I make money on that?" And they were like, "Well, you can do you know hosting gigs, and so you make money that way." And I was thinking, I make way more money than doing comedy. So I didn't, cause I, I would hear the Steve Harvey's and all the making mm -hmm. this kind of money. I'm like, I didn't even know you could pay, you pay somebody twelve dollars on the radio. I don't know. You said you've heard of it before. Maybe. I I was never offered that. No, not of offered, but you heard, but you heard <laughs> of it. Maybe somebody make that kind of money. Part timers, people okay. who are in really small markets, and I don't know where Phoenix falls into on a scale, but I would like to think it's the top fifty market okay. at least. However, black black station. It was so long ago. I, I don't remember. Uh, Light skin station. At least? No, no, no. It was like a it was a hip hop stand. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I didn't pay. That's why I didn't pay twelve dollars. <laughs> but no, I would say um, it was like it was like an urban station. It would have been, okay. been an urban station. No, but here's the thing. People always try to lowball us in every aspect of business. Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw Taraji talk about right, it right, recently. Right, right, right. We talked about that. Right. And results may vary depending on the cities that okay. we're talking about here. So the thing is. In negotiations, people always going to come at you low. Right. You just got to kind of King Kong it a little bit. Be like, nah, how about blah, and then go for that. You ain't, you ain't got to respond to this, but you, know, you got me thinking, that shit might have been in Atlanta. You should. No, that $12 offer might have been in Atlanta, motherfucking shit. Oh, it might have been in Atlanta? Yeah, I'm coming to think. I was like, I think I was going to. 
I'll holler at you, Reggie. But uh, what, 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 I don't know. I don't remember what exactly what okay. I was at. But here's something I, I always was wondering, um, and we'll get more into radio, but what, like I remember Steve doing a lot of syndication stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like, I get it. You got to make your money. But I, realized, I didn't realize how many people he was, it was hurting local markets around the country, man. People who feed off of that. You know, a, a local market who has a, a morning show, you know, let's say let's say there's 12 people running a morning show. I don't know. I'm making, that's 12 families you're feeding. Absolutely. Once he gets it, you need one person in the room. Now, 11 people ain't eating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he makes more money. I understand, but that's that's rough, boy. I mean, that's and the rough, crazy man. thing is a lot of times going in, because, you know, you learn about the business as you go, and today's business isn't the business from 20 years ago, okay. right? So you would think, all right, if you get in insert amount of money here to be on in one city, you pick up a second city, they're going to double that. It's not how it works. They do syndication because it's cheaper right. for the company overall. Right. And they may do some sort of trade agreement like, hey, like, you know, you carry the show, you get this much of the advertising revenue. There's so many different ways right. you can negotiate that, right. Right? Right, right? But to the point that you had, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of cities where there needs to be a local voice on. And then there's some cities where eh, maybe the talent just ain't there. You probably should right. just pipe some other people there, but when you have a city that's like really polarizing, like an Atlanta, a Philly, Detroit, uh, Chicago, you got to have voices from there, or at least part of that syndicated the show way. that represent the, the people you're talking to. I feel the way, but, but someone like, again, I'm, you know, we go, it is, it, Steve's not the only one that does, but people do the syndication, and they be syndicated in Chicago, in Detroit. Mm-hmm. I can understand in Little Rock, Arkansas, or, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, a little smaller markets, you know, mm-hmm. you grab them there, I can maybe get that. But I just feel like you said, you, you need to have some local, you know, some local people representing that, that can go out to those those parties, those open events and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Your morning show does stuff at a certain place. I just feel like that's a connection. I think radio people are, personally, are really connected to the community. It should yeah. be. Yeah. You know and what I'm people saying? People should be able to run into you in places. I think that's why the Ricky Smiley Morning Show works so well, mm-hmm. because you had somebody from every place that represented like because it was like 19 people on that show right <laughs> you know what i mean right, like right. Talk, you got chicago talk. you got new york you got birmingham you you have a gay you have a non-gay mm-hmm. you have a little mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. like literally every there right. was a handicapped person on the show right. was like, everybody was represented in some size shape or right. form and i think that helped trojan horse that show into so many more markets but then you have some cities where like they just be like a mismatch mm-hmm. like like there's nobody that sounds like they from whatever city you in. Mm-hmm. And I can understand why those stations lose, but mm-hmm. companies just pump these shows into these markets because it's cost efficient and they don't really care about winning. They just want a piece of the advertising dollar in certain right. markets. Right, right. It's money at the end of the day. Um, I, this is going to be a tricky question to ask you. I'm going to see how I can ask it. Um, Run it. No. Is, uh, okay, I'm going to say the word dying. Is terrestrial radio dying? It's a, It definitely, like, you know how, like, you know Charlie Sheen is sick. Right. <laughs> but he's alive, though. That's funny. Damn, I never thought about that. You got a point there. And one day, it will be gone. <laughs> there may be a cure for right, what's right, wrong right, with radio right, one right, day. Right. And maybe it'll be gone in a couple years because everybody's going to be listening to podcasts. Right. But the crazy, you would be surprised. Or maybe you wouldn't be. I had so many arguments with people about like, yo, man, listen, we probably should be blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, oh, hell no. Because such and such and such and such. Only for a couple years ago for people to start doing that. Right. There's so many people that make decisions, don't don't have young people around them that's really outside to understand the the cultural habits of people. So until you change the regime and get all these people who were mad because they ain't on the radio no more out of positions of power Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and put real talent in the creative and marketing side of like some of these radio stations, yeah, you can mm-hmm. continue to struggle. You and then radio is gonna continue to die, and there might be like one show across the whole country. Right, right. No, you might have a point there because I still do in certain markets, you know, radio for my comedy shows, and I go in there and it's two people in that whole building, that whole floor. I'm like, damn! I remember people just hustle and bustle. Get them, I get a t-shirt. <laughs> Shit, you know, damn. Remember back in the day, give me some CDs and t-shirts. Yo. You leaving? You leaving with a smile? That's been, thank you. That's <laughs> yeah, it, you know? man. Like you, I, I watched the money dwindle. Wow. Because the you know people spending habits ain't the same. You talk to a kid about, hey, what's your favorite radio station? They be like, what is a radio? Right, right. Like, right they right, on, right, they right. on YouTube Shorts, fam. Um, is okay. So you was on the, the you know, that show, Morning Hustle. Mm. It was going good for you. did well for you for three years. And, you you know, you had the Mexican standoff, as you would say. You said, yeah. you know, something didn't, wasn't working. And you weren't feeling something. I like something that you said, and we'll talk about why you left too, but it's part of it. You know, your mental health. Mm-hmm. You know, you know if, 
if, if something can go a certain way constantly, that rah, rah, this, rah, it eats at us. You know, people don't yeah. realize, even though we can sit there and talk, that's why when I see celebrities, like, I don't give a fuck about nobody hating me. I don't bullshit. We're you human can. beings. <laughs> we're human beings. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You might be know how to compartmentalize it to some little point, but it, it pops out at night. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Who, want, who don't want to? Who don't like praise and, and love opposed to fucking and you know whatever you get what I'm saying, um, so I could see that on that show you know um, you just felt it was time to go because of well, that's one of the reasons and you just saw it not going in the way you wanted it to go. Yeah, I mean everything was a fight. Everything was a fight. Everything was a negotiation. You know you got people doing sucker shit behind the right. scenes. You know trying to sabotage things. And I I'm smart enough to peep when people grease in the steps. Right. You know what I mean. And you ain't gonna catch me slipping. I know that's right. If anything, I'm I'm just knock the old chessboard over and walk away right, 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 if I right. see you ain't playing the game fair. Wow. And and yeah, and when you know what you're up against and you're fighting a good fight and you know your intent and your purpose for what you're doing and you feel like people are working against you or is making mm -hmm. something as simple as like enriching and enlightening the people difficult because they want to do whatever bullshit they feel like needs to be it. happening right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey man, fuck you and your methodology because right. I got as far as I did by doing things right. my right. way and bringing creative things to the table. Right. I've been a part of so many like winning situations that I know I'm a common and denominator in success when when you got people who are the common denominators in a lot of failures mm -hmm. what are you going to tell me about winning right right because i believe in my ideas and if you don't believe in my ideas i can't help the fact that you are maybe too limited to understand what i'm kicking to you you know right. what i mean so i had to right. move around man no, it that, took that me it move. took me 11 ayahuasca ceremonies to figure it out <laughs> but, but I no but, but but you know what's funny i'm like that too I'm going to fail on my way, not yeah. your way. Because it would crush me if I have to do your way and we fail. Especially when if you know, know it's wrong. Right, when I know it ain't right. Exactly, when I know. When I know. Were you afraid to leave? Yeah, I was yeah. afraid to leave because at the end of the day, like, I walked away from a lot of money. Money, right. However, money is a tool. And it's yeah. not what makes everybody, right? Sure. God's always going to provide. I made smart investments. I have side hustles, other things I do. Right. I'm still on TV. So, you know, and God, you know, Low right. willing that continues. Right. So I was afraid of that component, but then I realized I didn't need everything I wanted if as long as I made sure I had what I needed. Mm. And I had what I needed. And I got to right. do things I was never able to do in 20 something years right. of being on the radio, like take my kids to school in the morning. Right. Right. I finally got to go on a cruise. Like they would do a cruise every year and I never got to go. Right, like right. Like the, the company. <laughs> right, right. You couldn't get on. Yeah, I could never go. So I'm like, well, now I get to go on my own cruise and I get to leave and come back when I want. Right. And I get to like see that my kids really are the assholes my wife said they were wow. in the morning. I love it. I love These it. These dudes are terrible. Right. But you know, it's funny. And I'm glad you said that because I'm from Washington, D.C. And that's a government town. You get you a good government job. Mm -hmm. Don't you do no show business. You get you a good government job. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I wasn't built for that. And I left. And I just remember... Uh, you know, I've had ups and downs in my career. Times uh, I tell this funny story. I'm told on, with my friends, I tell it. I never told it on stage. But I remember one time. I'm famous now. You know, I had to. Um, I put a check in for like five hundred dollars. Did a little gig for five hundred dollars, and I thought I had a couple hundred, like fifteen hundred dollars in my account. And the lady handed me my my receipt. What do you call it? Deposit slip. Mm -hmm. She had like two thirty six. I was like, I gave you a five hundred. I thought she thought I gave her two thirty six. Right. Like no, nigga, you overdraft. I was like, oh shit. I thought I had some money in, the, in my, my account. You know right. what I'm saying? And I had to get my hustle on real quick. And you know how you say God works in mysterious ways. I had shows, but I got on the phone and started calling any and everybody. You know, I'll come out with this, come out with this. I remember getting on the mega bus, famous. Okay. With a hoodie on and shit in the back, like them the kind of shit. <laughs> driving, driving like riding like five, six hours to a gig, man, you know, because it was easier to do that than going to let's go up to New York, you know, instead of paying all them tolls and all that. But I remember, you know, and it just always works out for me. Mm -hmm. Something always just works out for me. You must have good intent in what you do. Is that what it is? Yeah, some people are in God's blind spot. Oh, that's right. Some people aren't. And like when you're intent on what you do and you always look out and never like switch up, you're going to be all you right. Go. There you go. Keep it consistent. No. So when you was on the bus, did anybody recognize you? The, 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 the dude, you know, take the ticket. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, we got the comedian. Nigga, shut it up. <laughs> get on the damn bus and go back. We get in the back of the bus, man. You know, top of this shit. But I was so bad. Like, Woo -wee. I rode in the front of the bus the first time. Because uh, 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 I don't know you can work on the top. You go on top, you go mm -hmm. in the front. But yo, but yo, no knees like this in the front. Huh? Yo, Ain't I no feel like they got them there. buses from China or Tokyo. <laughs> or whatever. Some, some low, or Opa Lopa Land or something. Yeah, it's like, tight. they make people this little? Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Now, it's tight. Um, but yeah, that mental health. Did you uh you over how long did it take you to overcome it? You know, you said eleven 
ayahuascas and stuff like that. I mean, like I was, I did like eleven ayahuasca ceremonies just to try to like get the rationale to okay. stay. And okay. every time ayahuasca is like, leave. This, right. you, you're, you're serving a master that no longer serves you. Mm. And when I look at everything I've done in radio, I had a number one night show. Yeah. I was a part of a number one syndicated morning show with Ricky Smiley. The Morning mm -hmm. Hustle yeah. was syndicated. We were number one in certain markets. So. Once you're number one in the mornings, what else is there to do except mm. not be number one and like the mafia get killed off right, one day? Sure, sure. So what if you could really get on the train like Carlito wanted to do at the end of Carlito's way and dip right. out? I was right. nice to Benny Blanco, right, but right. I also knew Benny Blanco was an asshole, so I dodged him. Right. I, 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 that's, I just made that up. Yeah, I like that. Well, I you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the, but no. Um, all right, so what was going to say about that? So you had kind of a backup of Dish Nation. So you had, mm -hmm. at the time, you had yeah. something to fall back on a little bit. You know, wasn't the money you lost. You lost all the money. Yeah, but yeah, so. pretty good than residuals. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's yeah. a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe you're not getting massages every Friday. Right, 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 you know, right, maybe, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, but right. Once a month now. It's down to once a month. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe you get a foam roller and just right. roll it back on it like a pet. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. But at the end of the day, like, we live in excess a lot, mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't necessarily like tighten the screws right. and prepare for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. And luckily, I did prepare mm -hmm. for a rainy day. I got some real, you know, I've been in real estate for a while too, like Smart on the low ski, woe ski. Okay. So everything's Gucci. Okay. However, did give up a lot of. Now sure. I have to do more things myself when I used to just throw money at problems. Ah. Like, oh yeah, I need this edited. Boom, right. right. Now it's me editing. Edit. I, I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> but get it. It, it teaches you new skills. I, I can now stay up late. I've been going out doing stand up. I've only mm. had one off night so far. Mm. Not Homewood. I got go. two shows this weekend. Nice. Um, nice guy. <laughs> but, Billy, Sor Billy Sorrell, my man. Shout oh, out yeah. Him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. I'm really excited about just having friends that don't rap. Right. <laughs> In addition right. to my rap right. friends. Right. And, it, and it's been a fun journey, man. Right. I understand that. Let me ask you with, with Dish Nation, with uh, Gary, with uh, Gary. <laughs> I hung out with him. I remember him in Dallas. I met him. I hung well, out. Like, yeah, yeah. Pause. Which I do. Pause. We friends, man. Like, <laughs> that's, that's the homie. That's the homie. You, you work with him, okay? You know him better than I do. And I go home? I <laughs> yeah, if you hang with him, though, you he hang with him. He don't know okay? where I live. <laughs> oh, he don't know where I live at either. So we both Fair okay. enough. Yeah, all right, now. That's my dog. Shout out to my man, Now, big up Gary, though. Uh -huh. um, and, and the brat and all that. I like the camaraderie. Now it's a little bit bigger. The show has expanded, yeah. right? It's gotten to another situation. Um, have you ever had a situation where you didn't want to talk about something that they brought? Because they, they write stuff and bring it to you guys to talk about, right? Yeah. Um, you know, every now and then, like, there'll be a story about just, you know, rap people you know. Yeah. And when you live in Atlanta, you're going to know the rap people, especially if you in, you know, right. media, right? Right, sure. So sometimes a story will pop up about certain people. you would be like, well, damn, you know, right. like, I don't want... Sure. Try to dodge that bullet or you just try to be like, oh, no, we'll see how the case work out. You <laughs> right, know, that right, sort of right, thing. Right. Because sometimes people get accused for crazy things and you know they did it. Right, right. But right, right, right. if it come out that they didn't, you want to at least be able to be seen that, like, hey, he was supportive and not one of those people that was throwing them under the bus. Because right. people hear nothing good you say about them and the one thing you say that might be a little bit, you know, come a little on, bit man. past six on them. People, I, I say it all the time, people hear what they want to hear. I can say, I don't like Granny Smith apples. Okay, I can say that. Mm. And somebody be like, "Nigga, what's wrong with fruit, man?" <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? That's like Granny Smith apples. You don't like fruit? Like, that's not what I said. But then it's it's we grab we people grab that sometimes. Absolutely. You can say I love his movie, so and so new Kevin Hart movie, new movie's great, whatever, whatever. At the end, I didn't really like the end. It was a little off in the end. And all he get back to him was he said your shit was off. Like that's not what I said. I said the movie was great, except the last part. But they don't want to. So now I hate playing politics or whatever. It was fantastic. It was great. Because I just like, you know, you know what I'm saying? People, I, don't, I don't mind you saying what I said, mm -hmm. but don't say something I didn't say. Right. That's right. the problem I have. Now I got to explain to somebody, that's not what I said, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, people like to run with the, the narrative, the negative narrative, you know, all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because if it bleeds, it leads. Like, yeah, we have I mean, been taught to, like, we celebrate the disrespect Right. And never the respect on certain things. Like, when was the last time you saw a big headline? Such and such show love, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Right. Well, right. actually, there was a story recently where Rihanna showed love to um, Natalie Portman. Like, but what she did? That was rare. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Usually it's like, yo, Rihanna said Natalie Portman was a wild bitch. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And right, right. No, no, you're right. You're that would right. be on every tabloid. Rare, good stuff doesn't really, uh, I don't know why we like that. Did you think we've, I think we've changed over the last 20 years, man. It depends on your friend group, because I, I don't know who the Facebook. young uh, Facebook. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know, it's people who remember when Reagan was in office, right? right? Wow. So 
when you hang out with younger people, mm-hmm. the things that they find entertaining and the things that really moves their needle just baffles me. Because like, mm-hmm. I think every generation is about the art of one-upmanship. If this generation was this wild, this next one got to be a little bit wilder. You remember, like, you know, right. at one point in time, the worst thing we ever saw was the Challenger exploding? But, uh, that's okay, yeah, like, I used to have nightmares about that right. shit. Like, right. I thought I saw it, and I was nowhere near Cape Canaveral. Okay, okay. It was just probably okay. clouds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the thing, we push the envelope so much that things don't scare us that, you know, you got to really come bring in some stuff, you know. We got sites online. You can see somebody getting shot, arm cut off, shark, in, in, bitten by shark and stuff like that. Remember, I used to have a thing called Faces of Death, the, DV, the, the VH test, VHS test. It's funny you bring that up. Yeah, one, okay. Yo, the other day, I was explaining to my eight-year-old about Faces of Death. And wow. I'm like, yo. To your eight-year-old? You, he had, oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good dad. He a different eight. Oh, okay. <laughs> really different, because right. he's, not, he's not me when I was eight. But, okay. so I was explaining to him how, like, man, y'all got the internet, so y'all can just pull up whatever wild thing you want to pull up at one mm-hmm. time. And I was telling him about how, like, you used to have to really grind to find the, the faces tape. of death tapes. Mm-hmm. I think it was tape one where they had the monkey in the middle of the tape. Come on, they, come on, They hit him with man. the hammer, yeah, the took the brains is, out. Yeah, come on. Yo, that joint was yeah. wild. So... I was explaining to him, and I was trying to Google it so I could just show him what the cover looked like. Right. But then I found the whole thing on YouTube. Ooh, yeah, yes, so sir. you know how like you ain't supposed to drive and watch stuff. Right. So I got this little thing to hold my phone. So I found it, popped it in, and I'm driving. And then like by the time we got on the highway, good, I looked at him. He was just like covering his mouth, right, right. and like, he was like paralyzed in horror. And it's just a testament wow. to how soft my children are. Right, I'm about to say, yeah, I'm about to say, <laughs> your child ain't out in the real world. Some of the kids are like, what else was that? Hey, give me some not, give me some chips and some drink while I watch this. Yeah, yeah they got a tough. But same thing happened to, like, literally tonight, Pierre. Mm-hmm. I'm in the kitchen, and I want to say I'm cooking, but I'm just opening the food I Uber eats and putting it on plates, right? Dirty. But I got I the news it. on on TV. And you know how, like, in the news, they tell you everything that's about to happen? Mm-hmm. Yo, in succession order, it was, like, five of the worst things that yeah, yeah, sure. a child could ever see, like, off the rip. There's apparently a flood in California at yep. the time that we're recording this. And then, um... <laughs> <laughs> a plane door flew off somewhere right. with somebody right. like on it and there's like a, a killer on the loose in some part of town mm-hmm. and it was like back to back to back and like he was more scared of that than he was something that was fiction right oh, oh. which mm-hmm. also is a testament to how soft my children right, are because right. this is the real world right. you play grand theft auto right. like it, they don't understand that the world is probably a lot more like grand theft auto than it is right this fake world that you think that's actually we, interesting. we shield you from. It's actually interesting what you're saying that. How do you make your kids tough, but don't hurt them at the same time? That's a real balancing act right there. Because you don't want them to get in the streets and get beat up and bullied and all that because they don't know what to do and scream back to daddy. You want to know, son, you got to get tougher. But what's the balance? How, how is that to balance a kid nowadays? Everybody's different. The more kids you have, the more recipes it's going to be to figure out what mm. work for them. My oldest, I told him like he was 18 the entire time. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, I always talk crazy to him and talk to him tough because ain't nothing out here sweet. My, my three kids, they look like iced tea. Not the rapper, but the drink. So they're very, you know, they're beige. You know what I'm saying? So I got to toughen them up because... Hey. Hey. Did your folks have to toughen you up too to prepare you for the hard streets of D.C.? True that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so they fight each other. Mm-hmm. All the time. And it's not that I command it, but they, they're not afraid of conflict. But I, you got to try to, like, microdose the world to them. And I, and I hate that they wasn't exposed to, like, the news and all that stuff as mm-hmm. much as I was. Because even as a small child, I was always fascinated with what's going on in the world. Mm, okay. Because, like, the neighborhood we lived in is what it is. And the crazy is normal. But what's happening in the rest of the world? What's going on in Beirut? Like, these are the, all the things yeah, that was going know. on when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Like, who's Bernard Getz? Mm-hmm. Um, why mm-hmm. is uh, Gor- why Gorbachev got that thing on his forehead? Right. Yeah, right, you know, like, right, right. I was always a geek about stuff like that because I felt like at some point I'm going to need to know this and how the world operates for when I start moving around it. And when your kids grow up kind of sheltered, you do have to sometimes do things to scare them a little bit. So right. like, every now and then I steal from that's, the room. No, no, no that's, that's, that's actually dope. You just mentioned about outside the, the little box we live in, I went on your page, I saw you do a lot of world traveling. That is dope. I grew up in Europe, and I travel. I've traveled. Okay. And, and my career has got me all over the world. Um, let, let the average person who stays in their community and don't go far, you know, understand the importance of traveling. Yo, 
the world is bigger than your block. Mm -hmm. If you have never left your zip code, mm -hmm. do it. Like, yeah. the world is lit. Some of it is actually on fire. But the rest of the world <laughs> is lit. Like, you got to travel. If you never left St. Louis, right. Right. go to Illinois. Mm -hmm. Or maybe further. Right. Um, a little further, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. if you've never been to, like, a coast with a beach on it, right. go do Like, because sometimes you could just drive someplace sure. fly. Sure, you sure, know, sure. and... It's it's just important to understand that the world doesn't surround or you know doesn't revolve Ball around, around you, the, the right. bubble that you live in. True that. You know, True and that. everybody moved differently. Have you ever been to Tokyo? Not a, no, no, I didn't been to Tokyo. I made my first trip to Tokyo. Something else I would have never had time to do if I was on the radio. Right. And the I way heard. people move out there, I heard. they three years in the future, and I ain't even talk about technology. I heard. The, the respect level. I heard. Everybody does their job at the highest level, and it's a clean ass country. As in every place that has a bidet. What is that? I heard. But let me get this right. Let me get because I heard of a bidet. I never been. In, so you you sit down and you do number two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So take me through the steps. So you you do you do, you do number two. Mm -hmm. Do you wipe yourself first or you or you hit a button first? Hit what, the button that? first. Okay. So so, so let me get it right. So there's a button that splashes water up. It, it, it splashes weird because it makes okay, it seem like it's okay, flicking okay. at you. It shoots, it shoots not, it. That's not that's not effective. Okay, it shoots in your, it shoots up your ass. Imagine uh, like a civil rights hose, but smaller. Really? Okay. <laughs> like free that kind last, of force. Okay, that kind good. of force, right? Okay. Smaller, and it's just handling the area that it needs to handle. But, and a good one will have a thing where you could like say if you got a wide ass, right. like maybe you gotta like aim right. the, aim the nozzle that's different. That's what I'm trying to say. And you can hit the button and it'll move it around. Like, they got them at Costco. I got two in my house. Well, 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 hold on, hold on. So you got to sit your ass in the right position, you know. No, you, well, it's the normal position. Okay, you sit down. And that know where your butthole is at? That, 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 that sprinkler? Well, you got to get that toilet acclimated to, you know, your whole situation. But, but, you, but when you know, hold on. When you're traveling over in Tokyo, they don't know your ass. Um, I think I probably have, like, a default ass. So whatever <laughs> setting it was on <laughs> when I got there, it worked. It right. And, and, if, and if, it's, if it's spraying your taint, then you need to move a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. okay. <laughs> Let me get this together. I just, I, I'm just, I've heard of it. You're the first person I've ever sat, sat down and talked to him about. This is going to be a clip, too. This we are that comfortable. Clip. Yeah, we really are. You're my boy. Come on. So... It squirts up in your head. You, you got to make sure it don't go between your leg, your ball sack, and right, you don't want to miss it. Because you don't want that, like, hell no, nah, little ass headshot. Right, right, like, right, uh, right, nah. right, right. So you, you make sure it hits your booty hole. Okay, after it's done shot up, how long does it take? 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or you enjoy it as long as you want to It's enjoy? weird. So the ones over there, you got to hit stop. Mine has hell a timer. Hell no. So I'm in a sushi spot, right? And, like, I hit the button, and I'm just chilling, and I'm like, this has gone on too long. Like, the water turned cold <laughs> after a while. And I was like, oh, snap. All right, cool. Me, you might enjoy it too let much. Let me put it into this madness. Oh, no, I was getting confused after one point. In time. And I had an edible earlier, too, so time is just weird anyway, okay, right? Okay, all right. We'll and use it's that like, as an excuse. No, like, time be weird. The people watching it. The, when you want an edible, like, 60 minutes ain't 60 minutes. Right, right, right. Okay, um, okay. But, yeah, then when the water got cold, I was like, it's time for me to stop this madness. And I looked for the little stop button. I right, didn't stop. And right. I, and, and then you wipe. But that, at that point, you should be, that's a lot of wiping because water's all over the place, right? Am I mistaken? It's weird, right? Because of, the, you know how, like, when you go to the carnival and there's that gun that shoots the water in the clown's mouth? Yes. It's a very potent, but yet, very really detailed thing. That's how I was able to shoot the water in the clown's mouth. Wow. So, oh, oh, you good at that? So okay. it's not like mop. It's not like a swamp when okay. it's done. Okay. It's like the Lee Harvey Oswald shooting shit. Hell Literally. No. <laughs> All right. All right. So then you, you, you sit there for like, let's say 10 seconds, 15. I, mean, I don't know what the second what you need. Let's go 20. Cause God damn, 20 seconds. Oh, wait. Yeah. Right. Okay. So 20 seconds. And then you, at that point, you just wipe up everything and then that, you should be good to go, right? Yeah. Wow. And every toilet in Japan, every single one at a gas station, sushi spot, airport, um, froyo place. Right, right. All of them. And it was weird, like, because I realized that we need more of that in our life. We would save so many trees. Fuck it. Yeah, shit, I'm be dead. But, someone, but okay, let me ask you a call. Oh, shit. So, can you not use it if you want to? You not hit the button? Yeah, you don't have to. It's not mandatory. They're right, going right. to shoot you. you. Just, like, you don't. Right, right. You, just, you can use the bathroom like a normal. Like but it's like an know. option. Like, if somebody order, offer you a butter mint, you're going to take it, right? <laughs> Nigga, come on. Butter mint, I will. With a sweat up my ass. <laughs> I don't know about that. But all right. I mean, it's weird that I, I even heard. paired the two together. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eventually try one. Uh, you know, fuck. I'm, yeah. I just, I'm just a little scared. I'm just, I ain't going to lie. I don't, just, I don't know. I, think it's gonna I was scared cool. at first, too. Really? Especially, too, because the first time I sat on a bidet was in Atlanta, and I'm like, I don't want to be like, 
telling my friends who don't live here about it, and they're going to be like, ah, you've been out there too long. Right, 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 right. However, right. the rest of the world is kind of already ahead of this, and we just need to stop being like that. So you put, you put the paper definitely around, because you got to sit on the mother, right? I mean, paper, how, holy I mean shit, it's almost man. like condom usage. Are you really putting the paper Nigga, on the you're toilet? Nigga, you put your ass on some, on some, un, some, some shit, un, un, whatever? They're very clean people. Nigga, they're that clean. You know everybody in the condom. Yo, you, but... You, in America, you know that you go to bathrooms here, it looked right. like something terrible happened. Hell yeah. In Tokyo, it looked like nothing mm. happened. Mm. It looked like a crime scene after the murderer cleaned up everything <laughs> to try to like, you know, prove that they were never there. I love They're it. They're very proud people and they don't want to leave nothing behind. Okay. Fig figurative and literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Well, for those who know about get in the comments for the bidet thing. If y'all have ever had a bidet, I'm gonna try. I wonder what that emoji look like. Yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. That probably, uh, probably waves. Wild. All right. Speaking of doing cra not crazy stuff, so you like to let me talk about a couple things. You like to box? I like to box. I'm a huge boxing fan now. Don't huge. come in here bullshitting about well, you like to box. You Gargantuan box. boxing fan. My man was telling me that you used to get down yeah, too. Right, come on now. Like, what was don't your let the weight class? You. No, listen. Yeah, like, you don't get fucked up. I feel me. like light skinned mm -hmm. people have really stepped up. Thank you. In the last few years, Dang, I think stepped up. Damn. I okay. mean, I think Ice T was like y'all Crispus addicts. Uh, okay, true that. And then the from that point on, right, like right, it was right. like, all right, cool, right, tough right. light skinned dudes from here on out. But my, a couple of them slipped on us, you know. When the time Christopher Wayne, let, uh, what, what's his nice with the, with the knife that, that we lost, that boy, that was rough. It, it set it back a little yeah, bit. What? It set it back quite a bit. Good lord. But okay, so what? So what is? The, first of all, it's a great <laughs> cardio thing, boxing. Hell yeah. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Um, off and on for like. I was like off and off for like five years. Five However, years? I, took, I had to take it serious mm -hmm. about a year and some change ago because you know what, like when celebrity boxing came back, oh, yeah. out, I would watch every one. And I was watching the ones that was on like in the late 90s, like when Todd Bridges was fighting. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, Welcome back, Carter, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I so funny. when it came back, I was like, I want to do it. So I hit my manager up. My manager hit Damon, who runs the celebrity boxing thing up, and, and we got in there. So. I'm under the impression that I'm gonna fight somebody in radio, and they kind of yeah. needed me to find an right, opponent. Right. And I was having a tough time finding an opponent. Then eventually, I got one. It was a guy who was like six foot two, and only downside was somebody I knew. And I really didn't want to punch anybody I know because the punch yeah. somebody is very personal. Sure, sure, very personal. Sure. So between point A and point B, that person pulled out, and I'm like, "What are we gonna do now?" And they ran through a list of opponents, then they eventually landed on how about Kimbo Slice Jr. Wow. And I'm like, but he's a fighter fighter. And I, mean, I thought about it. I was like, you know what? What's the worst that could happen? Get knocked out. Get knocked the fuck There's out. There's that. However, if I get knocked out, everybody would probably expect that to happen. But what if I didn't? Okay. What if I took it really serious? Like, I take everything. Right, right, right. Scam likely calls. There you go. Like, what if I took it that serious and right. did the work that most people won't do sure. and overcommitted to the situation in which I did? And the dope thing is... I could, the, on fight night, I saw the people who thought this was a game. And even like other celebrity boxing matches that I went to go attend, I could tell the people that maybe like was playing fight night as their training right, 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 and right. not necessarily getting in the ring and taking a real punch. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to see if I could take a punch on the other side of 30. Wow. And okay. when I realized I could, yeah. I was like, okay, let's go. And then when I realized that, yo, I still got it, like, you know, far as right. like with the hands, right. I was like, Okay, we're on to something. And I just trained. I my shout out to Pepper, or who runs Pepper Boxing, who was my trainer. Okay. Uh he got me in there with some really good spawn partners. I went in there, I had some days where like I got snuffed right. a lot. Sure, sure, sure. And yeah. I had days where I snuffed back and right, like sure. I built myself into a fighting machine and went in there and got busy. They called nice. it a draw, but right, I got right. a knockdown in the second round. Nice. And, nice. and and that's all I wanted. You know right. what I'm saying? I wanted like one of them dope pitches, which I ended up getting. Okay. Cause like somebody somebody like Sonny Liston Muhammad Ali the at the right moment. Nice. Like I have various paintings of it in my house. I know that's right. Um and that's all I want. I wanted that, and I didn't want to like get knocked out in front of my kids. Right, right. And neither happened. So like, I mean, and that didn't happen. So it was dope. And not saying you you asked this person, but who would you have wanted to fight? If you had a chance to fight a celebrity, who would you say? I you know I'd like to. Um, with him. I want like, I, like academics. I fought academics. Okay. I fought. Um, you said you have fought, or you would fight him? I would have. I would have. I would have right, right. fought academics. The thing is, I don't. What's your weight class, first of all? Um, 200? 220 and some change. Shit, you heavyweight. You Mike Tyson-ish. Yeah, apparently I got like 
magnesium in my bones or something. Right, right. but you could get down. You if you was if you worked out now, you could get down to what two hundred? You think? That, yeah, I think the lowest I've ever been as a taxpayer is like two hundred five. Two hundred five. So yeah. okay, that and, so, and I got to like two eleven for that fight. Yeah, and it was tough. It was not easy right. at all. Like, but I was disciplined. Everything was good, right. and I probably would have maintained that shape. I rolled my ankle in the first round. Oh, but the ooh, adrenaline ooh. Right, was like, right, sure. you know, I was still in it to win it. So, like, I, I just thugged it out. But I would definitely do it again under right, the right, right. circumstances. Um, a funny thing, because I, 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 I've boxed and I've sparred with a lot of people, a lot of celebrities I've actually sparred with. I've done uh, David Allen Greer. Shout out to David okay. Allen Greer. He's nice. He pretty really? good. Yeah, David Allen Greer. Don't, yeah, don't sleep. You know, they always seem years, to be like a certain type ago. of shape. But yeah, oh, but, okay. but, 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 no, but no, no, he was good. Uh, who else I did? I tell you, who else is really good people might not know? Van Latham from TMZ. Nah, like yeah. I saw when he started taking his life yeah. like real serious and he got good. like in a certain type of shape. Yeah. And he was in the gym like real heavy. Man, I was there. Shout out to him. He rocked my head a couple of times. Like, I bet, and he was somebody I thought about too, but I met him and I like him. Right. And the right. thing is, it's you you gotta mean it when you punch somebody in the face. Like, well, if the money right, I I'd knock everybody in this whole room. I'd fight everybody in the whole damn room. <laughs> I don't want the damn money right. Uh who else I'd do? Uh, heavy D. He was fun to work Word, with. Heavy man. D. I shout out to Heavy D. Uh, how was how was he as a person, man? Real nice. I, I never yeah. got a chance to meet him, but I love Heavy D. I remember seeing him in DC one time. I was a, a, in a little club, and he was standing, you know, and I was, I was looking at him. this one. He's you know, eighty nine. So, okay. You know, so I'm, I'm looking at him. I was like, that's that's Heavy D. Well, I just he was pretty personal. People were walking around, but you know, I was always afraid to go to celebrity. They wanted to be assholes and stuff. Mm. And then when I got to meet, you know, I just remember seeing him. I was like, man, and we hear good stories about him. And he was just as nice in person, man. We were really cool. He was, he was at the time, he was working, he was the president of Motown. And he was staying at the Four yeah. Seasons Hotel. And I dropped him out of the Four Seasons Hotel a couple of times. But we, was, we would spar, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he, was, he was cool. He was, uh, he was trying to work out more or less. You know, mm. so he was trying to get his thing in. Um, Ezel from Friday, you know, shout out Word. to AJ Johnson. I, yeah, he was so funny. Ezel, we was working on a movie. And I think How to Be a Player or Baps one of them. He was like... And I would work out. I'd box. I'd box you, man. I'd box you. I said, man, you don't want this, man. <laughs> I got I said, uh, he said, we can go 10 rounds. I said, easy, nigga. You know, this is somebody who don't even box. I said, right. give me three. Three? Man, I do 10. I said, just give me three. All I want is three, bro. Can you talk? So we, he came to the gym. The first round, I let him go off. <laughs> Second round, I said, it's my turn. Whoa, 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 whoa. About, about a minute into that shit, he was like, right, hold on, I be smoking cigarettes, man. <laughs> like, I can't go there. Nah, nigga, you got two more, you got a round and a half left. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, he ran around the, the ring, he didn't, he didn't go to the third round. I was like, most people don't understand. You think you can rock somebody, I'll go three, four, five, no, sir. The average person luckily go one round. You're not going three rounds. You know, at the most I got to sparring people was seven rounds. Okay, I got, I got, I got it's seven taxing, rounds. What? Yo. And the crazy thing is, like anybody who ever had a fight growing up, in your head, them fights were like five minute epics. Yeah. You fought for thirty two seconds. Thirty probably. seconds. There you go. <laughs> Every fight in high school was probably thirty two to maybe a minute and seventy. Yeah. Come on now. Two seconds, which Come is on. still two minutes. I, sure. I don't know why I added all that. No, extra that makes time. sense. But it made sense. But, but yeah, yeah, like it's a different monster. Right. It, and, it, are Did you, you have a bad day on the first day in the ring? Because like uh, me and my no, man no. was talking about how like the first day when you go to spar with somebody, you go in there fighting, but you don't go there boxing because you don't know what you're doing. Right. Did right. you have that happen? No, I started when I was 15, though. Okay. Yeah, I started when I was 15. I went to the, gym, in the, the local like um, YMCA, not YMCA, the, like, you know, gym or whatever, and um, youth gym. And I started, no, I, I, I started, my father used to be a fighter. I was decent, but I didn't get in the ring the first day I went to the thing. We, we was training. And I went to the, I, I sparred. I had three fights. I won all three, but I only had one kidney. My doctor said, if you're going to take it further, I'm, I'm only 15 years old. He said, you, this might not be what you want to do. You know what I'm gotcha. saying? And so that kind of crushed me for being a boxer. I'm not saying I was going to be a great boxer, but I still do it as recreation, going to gyms. Whatever city I live in, I, I joined a boxing gym. Greatest yeah. cardio in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tennis. Come on, man. It, oh, okay. And tennis, yeah. Who do you like as fighters? Um, you watch fights. I mean, Mike Tyson was my uh -huh. guy growing up. You know okay. what I mean? Because I, I felt that. like when he was in the ring, we was in the ring. Okay. Um, Joe Frazier is my cousin. Whoa. So, oh, but wow. but when he was boxing, that was before my time. Sure, like sure. I think he might have had one fight as a kid, but then his son Marvis would box. Yep. Marvis was good, but he was no joke. Until you met Matt, Mike. Yeah, I remember one time me and my dad like <laughs> we we ran to the crib because Marvis was fighting Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. This is like. 2 p.m. in the afternoon on ABC Wild World of Sports. Uh -huh. When I tell you we ran in there and watched that fight and we was back outside again, Come on. like 17 uh, minutes later, uh, like, uh, we uh, felt uh, bad, yeah, man. Yeah. We didn't so, mention so, a Frazier name for so a few what about weeks. The, I know, that's right. So I'm talking about of the newer guys. 
Who you newer like? guys. Um, you watch any new guys? I mean, yeah. I mean, Crawford, the, the big heavy. Crawford is a monster. Beast. Yo, I thought he was going to get busy when he fought. Um, Spence? Spence. I know he's going to get that busy. Because yeah. I like Crawford, I like Spence, I like uh, Javante Davis. Yeah, sure. uh, Deontay Wilder just uh, you know got upset yeah, a yeah, couple yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the bigger guys because I like guys who like you know who look like the what? Avengers when they fight. Right, 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 right. And those lower weight guys and anybody whose name ends with a Z, they want to fight all twelve rounds. Right, right, sure, sure. You like you like you like that one hitter quitter. Yeah, I like Deontay Wilder was like that. Yo, he would he would throw a yeah. punch that didn't look like it was supposed to hit anything, <laughs> right, right? And would yeah. just drop dudes. Yeah, yeah. And he's a big it star. was, and that's always it was always fun to watch. I, I don't like how it's become social media heavy, just talking shit over social media. People ain't trying to get in the ring. I well, yo ass, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll get you. Like when y'all gonna fight? I was like, he ain't ready for this. It's all that back and forth. Back in my days in the '80s, stuff they got in the ring. Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran. They got in the ring. Let's get this busy. Yo, now it takes forever to get somebody in the ring. When you watch those old fights, like. Mm -hmm. Hagler, Hearns, Leonard, uh -huh. whatever, mm -hmm. it don't even look real. Cause mm -hmm. they standing on a dime just mm -hmm. going for mm -hmm. it. Especially like Hagler, like he didn't mm -hmm. run from nobody. And like you talk about like Julio Cesar Chavez. Ooh, come on now. And guys like that, man. Like yeah, it, no, they, no. the monsters was different. Yeah. But also you want to be able to pronounce words when you get older. And that's, <laughs> that's why true, I think yeah. what makes Mayweather so smart. Yep. Like people can say duck people, but when uh, you really slow them fights down and see uh, how many nice. of them punches he, he dodged. One of the best ever. Yeah. It's well, ridiculous. One of the best ever. Yeah. But I'm always at the fights, man. Shout out to all my fun. I got a lot of people who go, uh, Van likes the fights. Uh, my man Daryl Chill Mitchell goes to the fights. A lot of cats, a lot of celebrities go to the fights. I love hanging with them and, uh, you know, talking a little trash. Yeah, Tony Rock's a big uh, boxing fan. So cool. So let's go beyond boxing. Let's go okay. to... Your other skill. Okay. Woo! Acting! All right. Boy. Sweet Justice, man. Tyrone? Boy, what the hell? Boy, you Oscar. Oh, sweat. So the crazy thing about that movie, Sweet Justice, <laughs> it might have been one of the first movies I, I, I did. Right, right. I have dreads in that movie, right. and the, mo the name of that movie has changed four times oh, right, since right, its right, release. Of course. That's how you know oh. it probably was just okay. Right, 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 like, right. I think now that movie is called Black Angels or something like right, that. Right, it is. It's like you should have to walk back, like, right, past right, some right, beads right, in the right, video right, store right. to go get it. Right, that's funny. Okay. Computer love. You was a waiter. God damn. We have, we have, oh, yeah, working uh, with the uh, Lamar Rucker. Lamar Rucker, at least Neil. Critics were saying, I thought he was a real waiter. Man, That's I did too, saying. brother. I ordered. I wanted to buy the order drink from you when you first walked in here. I had one. Oh, really? Did you have one? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I bring those up because I have a movie that's going with that should go, uh, Tubi. Okay. Yep. Um, I got a movie called Slice. Shout out to my movie Slice on Tubi right now. Check it out, y'all. It's a horror comedy. Dope. Yep. It's basically uh, what black people would do in a horror movie. And we killed the white man first. Okay, so yeah, that's so, what's up. There it is. Sometimes he got to go. Like, yeah, what yeah. genre of film do you like? I mean, I know people mostly associate you with comedies, comedy, right. but to do something in the horror space was that a breath of fresh air for you? Um, yeah, but it still has a twinge of comedy in it, you know, because my sarcasm is off the chain. You know, I I, I like to, to yeah, because you know it's funny. I wrote, I tried to write a, a straight horror movie one time mm -hmm. this is years ago. I write movies. I tried to write a movie, a horror movie one time, but every time I would get to something, I was like, I ain't gonna do that. But that's the part you got to put in horror movies, you know. Yeah. You know, a basketball go down a, a, a dark alley. <laughs> Let me go get my ball. Most black people be like, nigga, fuck that ball. It wasn't yep. five ninety nine. I get another ball real quick. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So my mind kept saying, I don't know how to. This, this. So this is between a horror and a comedy. It's, you know, it's a suspense horror. Guy rocks around. It's like a slasher movie, but it's got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of comedy in it. Which I uh, so to, to answer that question. Um, I like good movies. I know that sounds corny, but I like good movies. I like to sit back and enjoy. I don't, I don't, if I waste my time on a comedy, I'm like, this was some bull. It, you know, it's a very politically correct answer. Right, but but I like dramas where that shit. I liked uh, what's the name? Uh, Color Purple, the, the, the first one. I didn't see the second one. The first one. Mm. That's no comedy. I had a little twinge of comedy here. Look, that's here, where, where your sense of humor lies. Nigga, you you saw comedy in there? I only saw like parts of it. Oh, I was yeah. into stuff with guns and gratuitous nudity. Oh, Which there was okay. neither okay. in the color purple. Okay. I think. Okay. You ever used to get the HBO guy when you grew up and you would see what had strong sexual content and that, that's what you that's what you went for. That was me. Porky's right, man, Christine. I can see that. Damn Porky. Terminator. Anything with a gun. You know what hurt me real bad? What's that? The last American virgin. Boy, I was You crying. might be the only other person I, I could talk to about that. Come on, let's do it, man. Listen. 
anybody watching this, you have no idea. Yeah, it's emotional. How, how, uh, what do they call that? Triggering. Oh my God. That movie is because they can never make that movie Come right on, now. Man. Come on. Wasn't that something? Do you want to spoil it? Like, no, nah, I don't care about my crowd. I mean, they had time, but. Yeah, let's you, go. You want to tell what it's about? Come on. Go for it. You want me to? It's about this, um, this nerdy guy who liked this young lady. She was pretty pretty, but she had an infinity. She liked this guy who was kind of like the rough guy in school, leather jacket wearing dude, and so forth. Well, the leather guy dude got her pregnant, and he wasn't going to pay for an abortion. But the nerdy guy had so much love for her that he wound up selling all his shit for her. He sold all his shit. And even, you know, back in VCR and TV, got all, to get her the money to get the abortion. And she was nice. She was thankful for it and all that kind of stuff. And he wanted to maybe take the relationship to another level. And I believe him. I he might have got a ring or something mm -hmm. to, 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 to give it to her. And she had, was having like a house party or something like that. So he goes to a house party. And he's like, where's she at? Everybody's dancing, having a good time. The 80s music. It's an 80s movie. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, uh, where's she at? He's like, She's in the kitchen. He's like, okay, I got my, I, I love her. And she, and she goes in the room. And, and, I, I cry, I ain't gonna lie, I cry. A tear came in my fucking eye, I ain't gonna lie. She goes in there and she's hugging him. She's hugging the dude that, that kicked her, got her pregnant, kicked her to the curb. And she has her eyes closed and his, he has his back to the door. Got, got the door, opens the door. The, the, the goon, whatever guy, he's, he's had his back turned. She's hugging him, her eyes closed. And she opens her eyes and sees him. He has like a shit in his hand. He's just kind of like, and then what, what uh, 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 James Ingram? I did my yeah. best, and my I guess best. my best wasn't good enough. <laughs> Roll credits. Come on, man. I was like, no, 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 you, you raggedy ass bitch. How you does a movie shit? end that <laughs> way? <laughs> like, I, I, wa I swear, <laughs> as an adult, I watched that movie again, uh -huh. hoping there was a deleted uh -huh. scene where he came back with a gun. Uh -huh. Come on. <laughs> because that's how Come that, on. that movie ended messed up. That went in A Woman in Red. I remember The Woman in Red. Gene yeah. Wilder, Gene Wilder. Yeah, yeah, Kelly yeah. LeBron. Yeah, yeah, LeBron, right. Yo, he chased his whole girl, jeopardized his whole marriage, this entire movie. And then at the end, when he finally like had the nerve, I think the, the courage to leave his wife or whatever, the girl's husband came back from like out the country and they start doing it on top of the bed and he under there. And then he like, I think at some point climbs out on the balcony and was gonna jump. Wow. And then he sees another girl on wow. the way down. But he, he don't got no family right, no more. Right, right, right. He's going to lose everything. Speaking of, because Color Purple was a remake, I'll tell you a movie I wanted. I'm going to tell you my movie I think should be, wish it was being remake. Okay. And you tell me yours. All right. All right, you ready mine? Mm. I don't know why they didn't remake. This would, be, this would be a dope one. Watch him get excited because I know him already. We're we, we, we here right now. Could you imagine if they made a remake of The Warriors? <laughs> Come on, son. I was just playing that game on PlayStation 3 the other day. Okay. Huge Warrior fan. Come on. I love how my man got killed with a series of elbow strikes. Uh, okay. Yeah, and everybody was doing the elbow up and down at the same time. Right, right, like, right. Man. Like, that it, was a movie for me, man. It really was. And I watched that movie like I don't know what's going to happen every time. Remember you thought the baseball guys were going to whip that ass? You know, they had the bats and all that. They just look dangerous. Thing. Yeah, they look bad. I mean, anybody who spends that much time applying makeup, makeup yeah. how tough can we be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look, look like Kiss fans. They, Rock and, group Kiss fans. Kiss yeah. would have got beat up too. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Been a, they should be a gang in the remake. That's funny. Yeah, but I think Warriors would be dope. Some they kind of tried way. to do a remake like in the early 2000s, but they was trying to use real gangs. And oh, wow. that made it whack. Wow. Like, I think it was the, the absurdness yeah. that right. made it dope. Right. Do you know um, who my man who was clicking the bottles? You know who he was, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, 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 I mean, hold on. Well, he was in. Um, yeah, he he was in, in Forty Eight Hours. He's mm -hmm. on the bus and shit with the Forty Eight Hours. Remember that? Mm -hmm. he was the, yeah, that. And he killed Bruce Lee's kid. Bruce Lee's kid. That's who killed Brandon Lee. What do you mean? Luther from Forty Eight right. Hours, and I think his name was Luther also in Warriors, but his real name isn't Luther though. Right. But he killed. Yeah, he he, he actually shot the gun that killed Brandon Lee. I didn't know that. The crow. Yep. Wow, boy, you 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 are you are a plethora of knowledge. I was raised by television. That's right. Okay, so what movie? If you had a choice to say, I want to remake it. And that was a great one. Thank and you. I want them to do that and figure it out. Figure it out. Right, let right, a, right, let, right. Let uh, Charles Gambino or Pierre write it. Right, right. There now. you go. I got. Uh, I would remake. Revenge of the Nerds. What? But in Revenge of the Nerds, the nerds are the bad guys. Oh. Who would play uh Hala -ha. Lamar Latrell? Yeah, Hala -ha. Gary with the T or uh Wow. <laughs> that that person <laughs> that person with the booty song. 
What booty song? I don't know. It's some booty song. Oh, really? My my booty's brown and black? That's, that's no, no, not, red, not, not Sexy Red. Oh. There's like a dude who has a booty song. A dude and, has a booty And because song. it's a dude with a booty song, I don't know the name. Right, right, But he right, seems right. like a guy who would have a booty song. Okay. Not a bass song, either. It's a song about his butt. I, okay. I had to tune out. They did a remix, right? And like, uh, I think Lotto came in rapping. She's rapping on guns. Like, yo, talk that dirty shit, girl. Wow. And then he came on rapping. I was like, yo. I, uh. Yeah. The, the door of hip hop has been opened up and everything has come out. That's all. And I'm pro everything. Yeah, yeah. But there's just, you know, there's certain times listen to certain things. Like, I, there's certain times to listen to Two Live Crew, and there's right. times where there were right. not times right. listen to Two Live Crew. I remember right. one day I was listening to like Lil Nas X. I'm like, damn, this dude's talented. And then he like quickly went into what he's going to do to a dick. Ooh. And I'm like, yo, I got jumped. Right, right. Like, <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. You know, hey, you know, I don't know. Have you ever, have you ever uh, had a conversation about the dress? A man wearing it? Yeah. As an artist? Yeah. What do you say? No. No? Okay. And that's why I'm stuck. That's why you're stuck. Oh, it, oh, in, in act, your acting career? I mean, I, I, I'm not even saying that. Like, right. I need to pursue more things. Because I just chill, my phone rings, and okay. I'll get an acting gig, and okay. I'm playing some variant of myself. Okay. However, it is time to apply myself more, which I have. I've been taking right. acting classes. Good. So I can go audition for roles and actually beat people for them because okay. that's how you really get the gigs sure. if you're really trying to be serious sure. about it but it's come up a few times in both times i was like no no and nah right, right. so there's three times i guess and <laughs> now they don't ask me no more because they get it and i'm right, no type right. of phobic i love everybody right, and I, sure I, I work it. with anybody you know to right. be honest with you but just for me i just feel like the I, there's no reason for me to ever have a dress on unless i'm in ireland and then it's a kilt. It's a kilt. Yeah, yeah. it's a kilt. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny. I've always been on on the on the fence with both. You know, what I'm saying because I'm an artist, mm -hmm. but I think the time maybe the time has passed of you know men wearing dresses and it's like all right, let's move on. You know, is it necessary? And can you make a movie without it? You know, with a guy. I mean, what is that needed? What what is that image needed? It you know, is it really needed all the time? Now we had a lot of successful people, Medea, mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy, you know, you name Martin, all of them. But I want to. I think the time has passed. I think people are, are you know just not wanting to see it. And I want to see if movies are, can be successful without that and put a woman in it. You know that situation. Why are we writing movies with men in dresses still? What is that about? You know what I'm saying? Women barely wear dresses. Well, that's yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's true too. And maybe it's a ploy to like yeah, like. I don't know, like make dresses more marketable to more people. Maybe there's like a superseded oh, conspiracy theory that really? we're making up right now. Like, you know, okay. the dress industry got behind Hollywood. Is that what they So doing? they can sell more dresses. I never thought it. Boy, your mind is going other places, but that's why your head cracked. Sometimes it's the non obvious that is the answer. Okay. I'm going to do this thing we call hoish or broish. Okay. Okay. So what it is, is um, I'm going to ask you something, and this is for grown men, somebody okay. over 25 and older. Do you think it's a hoish thing to do or a broish thing? So you. Hoish is negative, not, you don't think so, and okay. approach is positive. Now, you only have three seconds to answer this. So I need to know your real film. When you, when you hear it, don't be like, oh, let me think my boy does oh, That's too much. Okay. When you hear it, what do you, and you can, and you, and you can describe it and tell me what you, why you're saying it. You know, you can give me okay. some information. All right. A man wearing split toe sandals. I'm going to say it's broish. Because okay. I'm going to assume that man wearing a split toe sandals lives near a beach or some body of water and maybe does scuba shit. Okay. Uh, so that's a great opportunity and if he does situation. It, if he lives here in Atlanta. Uh, if he lives here in Atlanta, maybe he wants to be closer to the ground. Uh, I don't you know I don't know what toe stuff people have going on. All right. I have pretty feet. I feel like I could wear most shoes. Okay. Um and if I came across a comfortable split toe sandal, maybe mm -hmm. if Yeezy came out with one. Really? I would probably wear it. I mean yeah. yeah, that's a toe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the toe hanging over I the sandal? What do we do it? That might be some weird sign language. That might mean something out there. I don't know. Yeah, like, All right. Illuminati, activate. All right. All right, let me ask you this. When you agree with one of your homeboys, mm -hmm. text in the word K, just K. Hey, come on, let's go. Let's it's go. Hoish. It's always. It's always. I don't like hoish, it. Hoish. I don't like it, and I don't like what people <laughs> spell come wrong. Come. Like C U M? Yeah, like I'm coming over. Like, don't ever fucking nigga, spell it like that. Uh, uh, well, well, you're ever. married now, but if it was a woman, you wouldn't mind that, would you? A How female? smart is she? What, what, nigga. Are you worrying about if she's coming over? How smart she is? She's coming over. If you spell <laughs> it like that as an adult, I'm a, she might be coming over. Coming over. You might be coming over when you shouldn't be. And he, like, after the relationship is over. You know what I mean? Like, all those right. be the crazy ones. All right, so, all right. 
You got to throw an emoji after that if that's what you mean if you're a female. Oh, you're okay. my homeboy, man. You yeah, your homeboy like, putting this K. Are you putting K back now? Yeah, niggas in the K. Like, yeah, 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 I mean, it, it's a little hoish. All right, all right, a little hoish. All right. Tomorrow I would probably say broish, but it just maybe he was driving shortly. All right. A man wearing, of course, I'm a man. Okay. Chelsea boots. You know what Chelsea boots are? What do they look like? Ah, right, damn. Boom. Oh man, so uh, what, on, co man. what color is this man? man? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about. It. We ain't doing color. It's hoish. Cause like, oh, if I ran, oh. if, if I, I got are you pair. wearing Chelsea boots? I got right two pair at home right now, man. You ain't shit. I gotta get rid of my what? boots, man. Are you and two other friends wearing them too? No. no. Then it's not broish. It, it's you trying to be exotic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're comfortable, so, man. They're comfortable. Great. Come but on, here's the thing. Crack. I'm not there yet. So those boots for you are like how bidets were for me before okay. I moved to Atlanta. Okay. Okay. I haven't experienced them yet. They might be great. Do you know how, you know how long it took me to try Uggs? Because I thought those were girl shoes. And why aren't they? Because they make them for men, too. I don't give a damn. Yo, They it, make these for men, too. And that's apparently, I hope it's a man's foot right it there. It is. Yo, you said hoish. Have, so have so, you ever stuck your foot inside of an Ugg? No. It is like putting your foot inside of a kangaroo's pouch. Have you done that before? <laughs> okay, then. Not you're my foot. Shit. Okay, you're what, what have you put in your... Uh, Mine's in my hand. So really? I wanted to see what it felt like. I thought it would feel like suede. It doesn't. It feels like fruit roll-up when it's wet. Oh, wow. All right, damn. And, and you've had that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. You ain't never... No, no. We can get rid of that. Spill juice on a right. fruit roll-up? No. It gets no. sticky. It's, all right. Okay. The next one. Um, skinny jeans. Are you skinny? <laughs> Hoish or broish? Hoish! Hoish. Oh, nigga can't wear skinny jeans or tight ones. Yeah, did you see the Cam Newton roller skate one? I'm already assuming that he's doing it for provocative reasons to get people to talk. Oh, so well, we have we'll have a clip of it, but yeah, he has some. So now I have to imagine it. Yeah. Oh. It's almost worse. Yeah. I think he's wearing skinny jeans and he tucked into them boots you just showed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, was fire. That was fire. Good Lord. Yeah, that was uh, something else, boy. I it's, tell you. The skate Shopping. wheels on the bottom of them boots. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea uh, boots. Man, let me, let me, let me see something. That. Uh, Yo, when you. Do you. Child hearing bips. Uh, child yeah, what, child what, 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 hips. Or is, are those bro and show ish That's a. Uh, I'm a fan of uh, Pat Mahone, but then you got some, Pat, some, some, some childbearing hips. All right. What about riding on the back of your homeboy's motorcycle? That's your boy. And this, who's doing this now? Cam Newton. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Can't, can't, yeah. Is he still playing sports? Well, he, I don't know. Well, I mean, does it, does it matter? I mean, it doesn't look like he's in sports shape at this time. Because now he has those child bearing hips that she spoke of. <laughs> Did he yeah. always have child bearing hips? I don't know. Well, but, but, but them pants are fire. He's in the off season. Is that uh, what, they are? What, what kind of jeans you think those are? I don't know. Stretch them. Mm, okay. I told you know he had the he had the podcast that's more popular than mine. So I'm gonna get me some skates and my my niece's uh, jeans. Y'all yeah, can meet at the same skating rink. It, it, it could be that. It could be that. All right. Speaking of this, um, another one real quick. Um, singing a female song in the car, even with your girl. Broish. Bro Man, let me turn this off. Because I do it. What? Lady, oh, single lady, she been in the oh, car. Oh, wait, wait, with lady. my girl in the car? Yeah. Nigga, anyway, with, with or without her. Have you heard Scissor's single. music? Uh, no, no, but no. I mean, I heard a song, one of her songs, yes. Yo, man, listen, there's three people who, like, un un until out. proven until proven innocent, there are three people who I feel are mermaids. It's Scissor, Doja Cat, and uh -huh. Sade. Whenever right. these people are singing, I stop what I'm doing. Like I'm hypnotized or something like that. I see, like I feel like SZA is singing to me when she sings. Nice, yeah, I yeah, yeah, it. yeah. I like the hit she got. That, that, I can't remember that song, but she had a, What's the one? Her, one of her hits about two years ago, three years ago. That was it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 Monday I through Friday, the weekend. When it's on, I know every lyric. It really? It's about a dude or something. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard That's a song yeah. called Kill Bill? No. I just killed my ex. That's her? Uh, yep, man, yeah, listen. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Sizzle? Why, why you, and shout out to Sizzle. She's very beautiful, but um, why you doing all the musical stuff and hearing all that? I'm working on a podcast. So okay, I'm busy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> That's what you, all right. Here's a section we do called IG Creeping. All right. If you go to your IG page and my crew picks some pictures, we wonder, you know, you tell us, you explain to me what this picture is or what let's the situation is. Let's get it. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with the first one. What was you thinking when you posted this shit? Come on, hey, um, it's so, yours too. It's you for that. What the hell? I like to post things in the morning, right? 
okay. that make people laugh. Okay. And I'm sure this uh, this grimacely built man uh, was probably gonna make an attempt to try to jump over that pole, and I'm sure it was gonna go terribly. So like, yeah, like I, I just post a lot of videos of people getting hurt. It's almost like faces of death light. Wow. Okay, I like that. I, all right, let's go to the next picture. What's the next picture looking like? What what is it? You saw? This so I'm in, I'm in Tokyo, Ooh. running up to say something motivational. You know uh -huh. what I mean about how like you know you shouldn't procrastinate and like listen. Last year it may have sucked, but it's a new year. Get off your ass. Right. Stop sitting on your hands playing grab ass something like that. I get and it. get out there and get to it. That jacket fly. Polo. Shout out yeah, to Ralph yeah. Lorenz. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, fly. More. The whole the whole look up is fly. You know you, you like you, you like your on the next level out there. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to stay warm. Yeah. No, they got they got the. You got the, the Afghan scarf or the Hamas Hamas scarf or whatever scarf is. You know what the hell that is, nigga. Okay. Yeah, Not the Hamas scarf. Yeah, All right, next one. Let's see what the next one is. What we doing here with the what the what the hell is this, man? That's broish. Um uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you had to say that real quick. Why pause, did you find a picture where you, I on, never man. stick my Come tongue on, out of pictures, yo? Come so on, that's you. Don't, yo, that's so in addition to doing like you know music as a solo artist, right. I got a group called the Bodega Brothers, and those right. are my partners, uh Travi and Keynote. Me and Keynote used to do radio together when we was doing nights in Dallas. And uh, yeah, we was hanging out in Dallas. It was cold as hell. It was during like the Christmas break or maybe a little bit before Christmas. Right. And uh yeah. And so so no dresses, but you're gonna give us the tongue. Uh yeah, it was like, okay. hey, we hear you're not. That was kinda like Really? Yeah. As manly as you could say nana nana boo boo, that's kinda what I was doing like in okay. that picture. All right, well yeah, that's uh, okay. I, my fists were bald. That makes that makes that, that, that makes it like, right. you never see nobody stick they talk about their fist ball? Like uh, no. That's what I was doing. Okay. What we got going on here? Um so this is a man apparently dressed as a zebra uh, thinking he could go holla at another zebra, and the zebra definitely probably started having its way with it. Wow. Yeah, it got, um, yeah, it got violated. Right. I was about to say, I can imagine the lion coming at behind it. Look where he's at. I oh, yeah, that, that probably yeah. happened, too. There's so many wow. different versions of these type of videos. People's name stop playing with nature. Now, what I, what I do like about your page is you, do, you throw a lot of videos on there. You know, put a lot of videos, not many pictures, a lot of videos. So, you know, you like to give that content that's funny and, you know, interesting. So, I, I like that, man. Because nowadays, I feel like, you know, our social media is our own little TV network. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. give you a little this, give you a little that and stuff. That's dope, man. You keep people engaged. And I try to remix the stuff, too, because I know a lot of times people just repost stuff. But I will add things to it that make it mine, whether it's the music or right. a cut scene there you go. or something just to make it interesting and stoke the algorithm because, you know, Instagram switched up on everybody a couple of years right. ago. Yeah, it's yeah, like, hey, yeah. build the platform. Now we're going to hold your followers hostage. And that, and that, boy, oh. I remember I posted a video about, like, not bullying, and they put me in jail for bullying for, like, 30 days. I couldn't go live or nothing. It was like... And Mark Zuckerberg don't pick up the phone. Right, I know that's right. I, I've been banned like three times. You know, once for like 24 hours, then it was like a week, then it was like a month. I was like, come on, come on, these people. And I took pictures off other people's pages and put it on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a, like a girl, maybe with a booty crack or whatever and shit. I'm like, this came off somebody else's page. <laughs> and they probably still walking around Instagram free. It's a freaking and Gen hell, Pop. Man. All right, we have fun over here. This is what's Woo! called spin the wheel, brother. Okay. Okay. If it lands on it, you got to participate. All the guests participated, and you know different. So I'm excited. So I'm, I'm gonna put it up here, and we're gonna spin. Have to spin. We're gonna give him a roll. When he's about to spin, him, give him a little roll. Roll call. So you ain't wanna know what's on it. So whatever it lands on, you got to participate in. It is what it is. All right. So come on. Let's get, let's come on, give me a roll. Let's give me a roll. All right, let's see. Give me that Bronx. You got a good shot? Oh, yeah, yo, you good. Right, cool. Right, right, right. Hold on, hold on. Yo, I look at that. Boy, you put a, put a spin on that thing, That was man. a muscular dystrophy spin, and I'm sorry. No, um, what the hell? Damn, I, I'm left-handed. I spun oh, it with my right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Sexual passage from book. Oh shit! It's one, one more time, cause we, we don't have the book no more. So let's fake it. Let's fake it. Let's continue. And Who took the sex book? <laughs> I know. I don't know. It's back to so. All right. <laughs> we'll do it one more time. Let's do it again. All right. Cool. Spin it now. Spin again. Oh hell no. <laughs> hey, so I spin. This game is cursed. It's the Von Erics of games. Lost virginity. Oh, man. You got to tell us how you lost your virginity. You got a minute to a minute and a half. All right, cool. Take the picture. Hold on. Let's get ready. Get quiet in here. This gentleman's going to spill coming from the heart. All right. So I need to know stuff like, you know, when it was, how it was, how old you were, how you, what was the relationship, how did it happen, how break it down. All right, so this new girl just moved to town. Hold on. Hold on. Slow down. We're okay. relaxing, brother. Shit. Okay, Goddamn. Cool. You probably popped off fast, too. Shit. Hold on. Let's relax, <laughs> brother. Shit. Let's get it together. Quiet on the set, please. Paint a bit. How old were you? 
Yo, I was, uh, however old you are when you like in the ninth grade. Um, 15. Okay, nah, I, my parents did some thing to get me in school earlier than everybody, so I was 14. Ooh, okay, excuse us. Actually, it just had to be the eighth grade. I was in the eighth grade, so I was like 12. Damn. 12, 13. What? Okay. Um, so I went over to this girl's house. She had just moved to town. And you know when new girls move to town, you kind of got to strike fast. Sure, kinda sure. Kind of like, you know, sure, like sure. the military. Was this New York or, 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 or Dallas? I'm living in the colony, Texas. I know at that's this that. Point I know time. that's that. Oh, it's nice out there, y'all. Oh, them good country girls. Go ahead. I'm just yeah, saying. who like are impressed at people with accents. So, mm. um, yeah, I made my move smooth with the two weeks of this girl moving to this new school. I found myself at a crib. Parents work mysterious hours, so it was the perfect time to go over there. It was a little bit after school. Yo, the radio was playing, songs was on. I think Knocking the Boots by H Town oh. came on. So it was like God wanted this to happen. Right. So, yo. Real, real, real question. So, why, why do you pick her? I mean, you know the other girls. Why do you, why'd you want her? Um, what about, at what that about age, her? you'll do it with anyone who is willing to do it with you. Nice. And, <laughs> and at this point, like, I was ready to let the gun go off, right? Okay, okay, so, okay, okay, um, okay. So, yeah, so we ended up, you know, like, you know, making out in our room and, um, we probably had a strong like hour or so before parents came home. So like you know like so you, it was hot and heavy first. You were just kissing, right? You know she takes you upstairs to her room. I'm, I'm painting a picture. It was a one story it. house. So okay, okay. I, so I want to be accurate. Okay, no problem. Um, so you go in the back of her bedroom. Yeah. She had a small little bed, a big bed. She had um, a small bed, which Ooh. well actually here's the thing: when you're like in eighth grade, every bed is a queen size bed. I feel you. I, you're, I you feel know, you. Small, in right. eighth grade. Right. You know how, how was she built? She had a little booty on, a little titties, or she was skinny. She, she had. Titties that were way bigger than they should be mm. for a person that age. I don't know if this makes it weird because we're talking about an eighth grader. Well, that's true, true. But that's true. like, I don't know if we're under age. like twenty one Jump Street <laughs> limitations. <laughs> <laughs> but however, we was, I forgot. I forgot. If anything, I was the younger person in this situation, <laughs> oh, okay, so I was getting sexually abused by this big titty. By nineteen year old girl, right? Yo, no, like she was in eighth grade, but she oh. had eighteenth grade titties. <laughs> the shits was big. Um, wow. And yo, so like, I think you know, I think. I think we did it for like three or four songs. Because songs were like four wow. or five minutes there. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Because like I didn't want the gun to go off too early. Right. However, her parents came home early. Ooh. So climbing out of the window and uh, I got out did of there. Did you get the gun go off first before you climbed out the window? Or you, or yeah, you? I did finish. I did okay. finish. Oh, and right. I was I'm trying baby. to keep the tower strong, if you know what right, I mean. Right, right. Because like <laughs> you don't know when you're going to be right. in this situation again. It I took me you. at this point 12 years of my life to get to this point. Right, sure. So, um. Yeah, yeah, and I just remember just like that long walk home. Yeah. And it's like, man, do I have AIDS? Right. Because I didn't know anything. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. Because right, right. like anybody who would have sex with you that fast, something must be wrong course, with them. Of course. Because I went with a girl for a year and like we didn't fuck. You know, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, so right. to get to that point and uh, be able to have it happen. It made the walk memorable. I remember as I was like leaving her window, uh, everything's gonna be all right. By naughty by nature came on. No sir. Something a little. It's up right, getting right, us. Right, I catch right, a bad boy. Right, like right, yo, right. I was like thanks, Tretch. Right, right. Was it uh, was it was it all all you thought it was gonna be? And then some. It was just. I thought it was going to be longer. Right. Because the tapes I used to watch were longer. Yeah, I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> but they stopped. In this, right, right, right. right. You know, Did y'all do it again? No. Be what? Because then she started messing with somebody. Apparently, she was a hoe. A what? Th that was her howling. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Now, right. Uh, apparently, like, her thing was they moved around a lot. Right. And, and she would just smash a lot of people oh. when they would move. And her sister told me this after the fact, which also made me think I had AIDS. Right, but, right, uh, right, 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 right. <laughs> but, damn. I've been. I, At 12, okay. I, I didn't. How long after did you do it again? With someone, whoever. With another person, so it didn't happen against like the ninth grade. A year later? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. It, it was, those are good averages for like right. people in middle school. Right, 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 right. <laughs> no, no, it's good. My first time was with, uh, with my babysitter. That's. Yeah. So here's the thing. I want to say that's what's up. Because that's what's up. No, my babysitter was my aunt. But it was still cool. You know, it was, that's it was, not what's up. What's wrong? I wore it, rubber though. But you, your babysitter was your aunt. Yeah. That's like getting molested and you well, go No, we weren't that close together. We weren't that close. We weren't, she was like my third aunt, you know, third removed. How does one be a third aunt? So she was like older than a regular aunt would be. No, she was younger. And she had old parents. I understand yeah. that. I have an aunt that's the same age as me, but we've never done that. We used to wrestle. See? See? But not sexually. 
Like, oh, okay. we used to watch a lot of wrestling and try yeah. to replicate the moves. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we thought we was going to be, like, the intergender right. uh, tag team champions. Right, 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 right. right. But no, I bet it wasn't my aunt, but it was a hood rat. I, I, I can say hood rat because she okay. might still be around. So, a girl from the hood. And I remember I was about 14 or 15. And I remember we went to her house. Her, she had a brother play football, you know, a muscular dude. And she, I didn't want him to come in the house. And it was in the hood. And I remember we were on the, um, what do you call that, uh, recliner chair. Mm -hmm. And they had a, remember in the hood, I always had a screen door that pops in. And um, the regular door, I was waiting for the screen door to open. And I remember she, she got naked. Now, she was only like 14 probably too. But she had hair, a lot of hair down there. I had like two pubes, nigga. Bing, bang, bang. <laughs> right? And I was thinking, God damn, that's grown right there. I remember trying to put my penis in the hair. God above damn. the hair, not like below. I was like, God damn, this, this ain't working right here. I'm trying to put it. She had to grab my shit. And like, no, like down here. I was like, oh. I remember going there. I was like, oh, shit. This feel different than me. Than me. I was like, ah, I, I remember looking back at the door and shit. I was like, oh my God, I hope they'll come and beat my ass and shit. So I don't, I don't know how long it lasted, but that was the first time I ever had. That was the bomb, though. Did it you do bomb. it again? Oh, yeah. With her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. We, my father took me to a park. We had a, outdoor, like, go-go music and all that at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And we walked away and found, like, a, like these uh, townhouses, whatever, kind of like a townhouse, apartment townhouse, whatever. And they had, like, um, cars that parked. You know, like, in Dallas, where they have the little roof over, you know, mm -hmm. all the cars can park. And we went between two cars. Pull a draw, pull a little pants to the side. And, and I remember coming back, running back. And my father, what the hell you been, I've been looking for you? I'm like, I was just around the other side of the <laughs> stage over there. Mother, it's been 35 minutes. I'm like, I know. I shit all sticky and shit. My like, oh, time to go back home and shit. You know? Have you seen her as an adult? No. No, I've never seen her again. Yeah. On purpose? No. And she had hairy She had a hairy legs. like hairy legs. We had a lot of hair on the legs. Ooh, wait. 80s was a different time. Yeah, yeah. It was a much yeah, different time. Yeah, the bush time. and the hair was People our was thing, man. out. I don't like when women tell me they don't want to have a hair down there. These women are like, I don't want a hair. I said, why not? I said, because they're going to stink and smell. I'm thinking, like, you wear weed, bitch. With all that hair. What the fuck? That don't matter. <laughs> Hunk of hair and shit. And why does it got to smell? You can't take a shower and wash it. You can, women can't keep their thing down there with hair. You would think they'd be able to. It's not yeah. like you walk around with that beard stinking. Okay, yeah. Unless you do. Come on, you now. I got uh-uh. And to be honest with you, some vaginas aren't pretty. Some of them look like they've been oh. through some things. Okay. You know what look mean? like the like, surface of the moon. <laughs> And that's a sign where you should, yeah. you should bounce, man. Like, right, I don't need bouncing now. I don't bounce. My time, my time is up with all that good stuff. I'm not chasing women no more. I'm tired. Good for I you. I did it, okay? You know what I'm saying? If someone happens to fall in my lap and we get together and get married, God bless her. But I'm not chasing no more. I'm a bitter old man now. You haven't used any of the apps because that's one of the things I, I always... tried. I, I tried what is it, Facebook, but they don't believe it's me. That doesn't count. I'm talking about the apps. Oh, no. What that like, mean? Like the Tinders of the world. The, oh, the, no. But people don't believe it's me. They're like, yeah, ain't you. Raya? Raya? Raya was a... It's oh, like where it's like rich. celebrities, yeah. but I also feel like people could get on there just because they, cause you're a celebrity, and really? I, I don't think that's I heard fair Raya. I heard, yeah, I heard, I heard like... Real, real, really? Okay, that can't be a Raya. No, no, no. But but yeah, I, this is, I'm going to let God do his job, his job. And he will. So I'm not close to a woman. I'm just not going to run around and chase. If you don't call me back, I'm not calling you back. Hey, when you let the game come to you, it will. Explain, explain, you know what I'm saying? I got a podcast I'm in love with. And people love the podcast. There it is right there. And I love you for coming. That's why we got you a swag Yo, bag. Gifts. Everybody don't do that. Pull out the bag. Yo, Somebody man, appreciate it. Can I show the people the gifts? Or is this, no, no, because do. I don't want nobody who's been on here before to be like, no. yo, I didn't get that. Nah, or son, like, no, well, he son, gave me, no, no. There you go. Car. I got so, a book. What that title My 100 say? Homies and Phonies of Hollywood. Oh, Yo, I remember yeah. you started promoting yeah. this book a well, few months ago. Yeah. Uh, this was like a couple oh. years ago. Yeah, a couple years this. ago, yeah. So, yo, man, be sure you check out my man Pierre's book because, you know, he's an author and an Bandit. actor. Um, this is a bandana. A bandana, yeah. Do rag, bandana, whatever Appreciate you may that. need. Yep, yep, yep. What else we got in there? Um, we, we got a mug. What? A cup? Come on, that's I, official. Yeah, I, I drink coffee in the morning, so Perfect right there. P perfect. What oh, we got? a comedy hype uh, playing oh. cards. Yes, you is can play playing cards. Is it playing cards or is it yeah. actual card games? Everybody's it's doing card it's, games. It's, it's, it. it's a card game, and you know, it tells you about celebrities, urban, like movies, TVs. It's a quiz game. You can play with your family, you know. Who's the best smelling celebrity you've ever been around? Charlie Wilson. Word. Yeah, I tried to find his cologne. I asked him. He told me something I can't remember. I couldn't find it, bro. You think he told you the real answer? No, I think he would. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, we talked about a lot of good stuff. Oh, and that's the official right there, boy. That's your idea. Don't, oh, everybody on. ain't got it. If this is one of them Pierre Panic Room shirt. Ah! Soft, soft material, slim fit. 
Yo, listen. Now hold on, I, I might get you extra large. This is you conflict got, free cotton. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. is it a regular large? No, no, no. no I get you extra large. Extra you, large. Cause I you mean, swole up, brother. I see them all on them guns, boy. You know, I have a low season and a, a high tide. Okay. When it comes to my weight. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm in my my, my winter hibernation body. Is right that what now. it is? Okay. I'm gonna work on it in a couple right. weeks. Well, it, it, we'll it, it, it is. Yo, thank you for these, man. Yo, thank you for the combo, man. You asked some questions that people haven't asked me before. Beautiful. I never told. I never talked about. The virginity story right. before, right. and right. I wish right. Facebook right. was a thing back then, because I would look her up now just to make sure she's right. alive, because right. I still have concerns. Right. I'm going to be honest with you. I was a little semi-intimidated interviewing you. Now, I ain't intimidated in interviewing anybody, because you do it for a living. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And you do it. And I'm like, all right, how am I going to approach this? But I approach it just how I normally approach it, and it worked out. Man, you let me you tell being something. you works every time. I appreciate you that. You are very approach. Like, yo, you, I met you when I was nobody. Right, right. And you were cool then and you cool right. now. Like, that's what I talk about when people don't switch up. Mm -hmm. They go so much further in life. Sure. You know, sometimes we take the scenic route. Sure. Because we ain't assholes right, and sure. cutthroat and like stepping over people to get what we need. Right, but right, when right. you play the game fair, man, right. God, look out. And I'm glad you said that. I wish I said it before you said it, but <laughs> to say this, man, everybody I talked to about you had number good things to say. Now one person say, oh, I ain't no fuck. Not one person. They say that boy down to earth. He cool. He open. He go. I'm like, really? I mean, not really, but because you've been cool when I met, met, met you. But you know, sometimes it can be facade at that moment. I get it. We had a meeting, whatever we had. But no, man. Everyone say, hey, crack is a real straight up dude. So I'm just letting you know the word about you is good. That means okay? a lot. I mean, that dead ass. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I wish I was there before you told me. <laughs> No, sorry, like I'm kissing your ass. But no, man. And so I was excited about having you. A little nervous. Like, okay, let me see how I'm going to work this out with him, man. But I called. You said you come through. You came through without a, no bullshit, you know, nothing, man. I really appreciate this, man. It's my little show, man. You know. Yo, your yeah. show is big. I, I know because you in it, you don't right. feel it. Right, that's the true. The impact. That's true. But, like, I would see your clips right. whether I was super plugged in or not. Like, the content's getting out there. Right. People are aware of the panic nah. room, man. This is, this is a dope spot, man. Like, I appreciate it. No, and, I appreciate it. you make it. people comfortable, man. We're good. We're good. I, I, I really feel like I do that. And I'm really happy because people come here to have a good time. They want to come back again. You know, they're laughing and stuff because sometimes the interviews, and I don't know how you approach them, but it can be very, like, you know, it can be very, you know, like, even they don't know nothing about you. So, so how long have you been doing comedy? Or, or whatever it is. You know, it feels like uh, a little bit of mm, mm, mm. But I was going to. Before I left, let's talk about some real quick, some social, some cult, some cultural stuff that's happening right now. Okay, and I just want to hear real quick what you, what your mindset on. Um, I don't know the whole story, but Rick Ross got a baby coming away with uh, and got a baby mama, right, and a girlfriend you about to mess with. What, 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 what is that about? Um, what the it's, it's weird when people get into the baby mama drama because there's so much to be had. I mean, I'd be aware of it and I'd be like, hey, you gonna move how you move? I mean, if I had that kind of money, yeah, I probably would have more kids as well, right too, but. You can't just necessarily be seating up everything out I here because not everybody mama material, you know? And sometimes people might be utilizing you for an 18-year payday right. and not necessarily in it for all the right reasons. Because, like, you know, because, like, shoot, I think one of the people that's coming at him real heavy is one of his ex-baby mothers. Right, sure. And sometimes, you know, the person you was in love with will switch up when y'all ain't together no more because right. maybe they're not getting what they felt like they should have got out of the relationship or whatever. I don't know people's situations, right. but... I hate to see it. My interactions with Ross have always been dope, man. Right, right. And, I feel you on that. And I feel like, you know, you're going to figure it out. But, but, but to me, I'm, we, we from a different generation, you know, and I, I like these people, but the futures, my man, Country Wayne. I mean, are we, are we, are we just saying, I want to have kids, man. Can you give a, you have how many kids you have? I got four. Four. Are they in their house with you? Yeah. Okay. You know how much time you have to give four kids in the house. Can you give adequate time to eight, nine, ten kids? It is impossible. Okay. Especially mm -hmm. if you are really on your grind right. and trying to do things. There's been times where, like, I've had to look at my kids knowing I needed to go do something else that, like, would further my business or just, like, whatever I need to do. And I'll take a deep breath. i go spend time with my kids because my kid is never going to be that same age that he was in that Come moment. Come on, man. Come on. Later. Come on. You know what I mean? And you don't want... Your kid's memory of you being always running out of the house, so always running to do something. So that's been another, like, of the, the gifts right. of this. The, even the pandemic. As much as I hated the pandemic, not being able to move around, to be able to be in the house with my kids during that pocket of time, even though I felt like, uh, what was it, uh, Happy Gilmore... What is it, Billy Madison? I feel like Billy Madison, because I was in school, too, mm -hmm. having to do their homework because everybody mm -hmm. was virtual. I wouldn't trade that in for the world because you, you can't get that time back. So it's hard with four. 
So imagine like the Nick Cannons of the world. Right, and right, right. Even the Elon that. Musk is, who doesn't get enough credit for having just as many kids as Nick Cannon. Um, I didn't know that. He has 11 yeah, kids yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, see, white people be doing it Pull too. Pull that microphone close. I'm going to make sure I hear all White that. people no, be doing it too. Yeah. Elon Musk has 11 yeah. kids, but he also can afford those kids. But, but hold on. Are we talking about just because you can financially afford one, you should have a lot of kids? What no. The emotional part we're talking about. You know, and I was very superficial when I said that, but it's not 100% what I meant. Okay. I know he could afford it. Right. But I'm sure, them, I'm sure one of them kids is going to set something on fire at some point. Right. Because kids, there's going to be a blind spot kid. I have a blind spot kid. I know who I'm going to have to bail out of jail mm -hmm. in my house. Right. I already know. Right. Because I spend enough time observing and watching so I know the vibes. So when you have more than an observable amount right and the in the ages is all spread out yeah like yeah, uh, yeah. one of them might know what cocaine smell like at some right, point right. hell no <laughs> but but you know i think it's it's become like a cool thing to have like ain't no problem if i can have them i can afford to take care of them i should have them i just think that if they can god bless them man i hope they all turn out right the kids you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying it ain't you know some daddy issues you know ain't been around or whatever so i hope i hope that for them but i don't know if it's as cool as to have them keep having kids i mean to me Certain point, you should say, "All right, enough's enough." You know, you know. I mean, to me, it just maybe some of these point. people feel like, "All right, yeah." Uh, you know, like when you make a pancake, first pancake usually is not a good one, right? Nigga, I know you ain't about to go there. Mm. So, there's somebody watching this right now <laughs> eating pancake who know what kid is the burnt pancake. Hell no! Nah. And you had to make spare kids. You make spare pancakes. A couple more pancakes. All right. Sometimes All right. it's the first two are bad, and then you figure it out. At a sitting, you can only eat about three pancakes. You can't eat ten. Yeah, nah. Like, the other seven gonna be what? You gonna throw them away. Mm. Or you gonna put them in the fridge with the uh, attempts to reheat them, oh, and no. then you're gonna realize well, there ain't no real good way to reheat you know, pancakes. I gotta say, damn, that's like McDonald's fries. Once they get cold, it's a wrap. Nah, I figured it out, bro. What the hell you? You ain't part of the AFG? No. Air fry gang. Oh, air fry. Oh, yeah, yeah, Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. resurrected so many French fries from so many questionable fast food establishments in my air really? fryer. Yo, you throw that shit in on and hit warm. I'm not coming to your house for uh, French fries. <laughs> They're right going to be new. I'm going to okay. pull out a fresh batch All if you right. pull up. All right. Well, the last thing we're talking about, uh, my man Cat Williams lit up the uh, internet. You know, lit that man up mm -hmm. and shit. And I got, it's gotten to the point, it's feel like everybody's just talking now. Now it's good. Now everybody like, he opened the floodgates of get it off your chest. That yeah. situation. Everybody's doing that. Um, he did something, I, you know, I just want people's opinion. You know, he's been beefing with Kevin for a while, Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. I, I would like for that to end, you know, just outside looking in. The two brothers I like a lot, I would like to see them finally get it together. However they need to get it together, i like to see it. Because I don't like to see two brothers at the top of their game doing that constantly. You know, they've been doing it for years. Yeah. Well, it ain't going to happen too soon because he got his wife. Uh, Kevin Hart got, I mean, uh, Cat Williams got Tori, you know Tori uh, Yeah, Hart okay. Tori Hart is on yeah. tour with him. Shout she out to Tori. Tori. Yeah, shout out to her. What, is, what does that mean? Like, well, I mean, I mean, you know what's, you know, I mean, you know. I do uh, feel, I do see how people feel like is when like Faith Evan went to go record with Pac. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, when right, when right, Pim right, and Biggie right. were beefing. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, and granted, I don't know because I'm not 100% of everywhere. Right. How many opportunities did Tori have to go on tour with Kevin? I don't, did, did she? I right. don't know. I'm asking right. from a place of not knowing. Right. And at the end of the day, when you got bills to pay and you got something to do, if the opportunity ain't here and it's there, you gonna probably do that. But that also probably comes from some like yo spiteful we ain't together right, stuff right, anymore. Right, right, right. And there's there's some underlying things there. And I've had the ability to talk to all three people in various sure, degrees. Sure. So I don't know what makes their relationships or lack thereof work or not work. Mm -hmm. But hopefully she get what she you know supposed to get out of it. Because right. Tori's hella talented. I know she's she right for people. I too. like it. I, I like her. I like I, I like Kat. I think that's a chess move Kat just did. He's smart. He's you know so what I'm saying. Smart. You could tell what people yeah. just smart, weird. Like you may not understand all their tactics, but you know they smart. Like I saw him on an episode of NYPD Blue. Yeah, yeah, he dope. Yeah, and I believe acting. that he wasn't even acting. I just felt like they really? just caught him and just had that conversation with him about it. Wow, he's that good. Right, right, right. Now he is, man. You know, I, like I said, I got mad respect for him. I, all three of them I do, uh, but just it was just weird when I, I popped up. I was like, oh, okay, well, you know. But you know, we also in a time yeah. where people just be doing stuff. Uh huh just so people will talk. Sure. And there have been situations that I've been privy to to where you would think this is really happening and everybody's in on it. Mm. Not saying that that's 100% is right, my thing, right. but Could I be, would right. not put it past it because at the end of the day, 
No one wants to be in the headlines for like pulling a gun out at the right. airport anymore because that's been done enough. Right, right. And I know some rappers who've done that right. to varying degrees of success. Right, right, you know, right. Some didn't realize they had warrants before they did it, and then you did extra time. Right, you're sure. dumb. But right. the um, the but people play the media game. There be reality people beefing when ain't really beefing. It be right. rappers beefing, and they be joking about it on Facetime later, and. I think this spills into a lot of other things because it's the best way to get free publicity. Right, right. Do you think it's ever going to reach ahead? You know, enough's enough. A murder? The ceiling always gets higher. Has there ever been a comedy murder, though? No, uh, I murdered a stage last week. That's why. Th yeah. And those are the only murders I want to see. You know, uh, Alfalfa got killed. I know, I know. Yeah. Over like right. a mm. dice game. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the only murder like in comedy ago, I could right. think of. Everything else has been overdoses. Right, right, right. Right. I'm sure someone in the comments, well, no. you remember old, uh, you know, right, right. <laughs> Red Knuckles right, right, from right, 1938. Right, right. But, nah, but shout out to all three of those, Kat, uh, uh, Tori, and Kevin, man. You know, Kevin, I think he's probably unbothered, but it's just, you know, just, Kat's just, a, you know, just, just on another wavelength, man. You know, he just, he's just on another wavelength. He opened the doors for a lot of things, so shout out to him, man. Again, shout out to you, man. Thank you so much for coming to the show, man. Thank you. Yo, another episode. We got a dope... Man, we got head crack. Give it up for head crack, y'all. Yo. Come on, official, official. Don't forget to hit the notification bell or subscription button, y'all. You know how we do it. Another episode next week on PS Panic Room. And a shout out to all the fans who say what's up to me on the streets, man. I love y'all. And check out my new movie, Slice on Tubi, man. Tubi, watch it on Slice on Tubi. Watch out for it, all right, y'all. I love y'all, and we'll holler later, y'all. Yo, what up, it's your man, Hey Crack. And you see me, I'm comfortable. You know why? I survived Pierre's panic room. Let's see if you can do it. Mm. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it.